Banco. Banco Beverage. Proudly serving the Lehigh Valley for over 80 years. It's 80 years. Say it with me. 80 years. It's a long time. Over 30 plus breweries distributed, including Miller, Yingling, Pabst, Guinness, Heineken, plus a generous variety of imported and specialty brands. They are located at Crackersport Road in Allentown, PA. Can't get any more local than that, Lehigh Valley. Banco Beverage is locally owned, operated since 1933. They have an exceptional team of staff dedicated to making their customers happy. If you're interested in having Banco be your purveyor for whatever bar or establishment you own, you can go to www.bancobeverage.com. I have the information in the ads as well. And I want to thank Banco for coming on and being a sponsor. Myself and Tony are working on some projects and we are going to be bringing some really cool content as well as uh, Banco is going to be providing for a lot of the things that we do event wise. So uh, thank you, Banco, again. Thank you, Tony. And check out Banco Beverage. Giacomo's, Giacomo's Italian market. What an awesome relationship that has blossomed between Never Again Studio and Giacomo's Italian market. We've been working with them with Studio Kitchen. Um, we've been doing their Italian sausage and going to pop-ups with them. I love Sal. I love all the guys over there. It's always awesome collaborating. And uh, you should go check them out. They got specialty Italian items. They're famous for the cheesesteak, the sausage. I can't even list everything because everything over there on that menu is fantastic. It's a home run. They are in Easton, uh, PA, 700 Cattell Street. That's 700 Cattell Street in Easton, PA. They are over by College Hill. It's a dope area to check out. You need to go there. They got plenty of uh, inside seating. Um, they got all kinds of specialty Italian things off to the side, a pasta, vodka sauce. I usually just go there because I'm not making it as good as Sal. So I pick up my vodka sauce and, you know, I say what's up. We got some oils and all kinds of different things. But uh, I can't say nothing but positive things over at Giacomo's. If you know them, you know them. If you don't know them, you're crazy and you need to get over there. That's 700 Cattell Street in Easton. That's Giacomo's Italian Market. Tell Sal what's up. <laughs> The Curious Plantaholic, located in Nazareth and Clinton, New Jersey. Uh, the Nazareth location was opened first, and uh, I met Jenny. We immediately hit it off. Uh, I knew we would start working on projects. She is the energy and the breath of fresh air that Nazareth needs. Uh, I started buying plants off of her, went down a rabbit hole. Now I got a bunch of plants I got to take care of. I'm trying my hardest. People are helping me. Um, what an awesome shop for plants, retail. The energy in there is amazing. The employees in there are amazing. Uh, it's a plant and supply store focused on connecting with local communities and boy do they do a, a fantastic job at that um i can't say enough about these guys you need to go to their locations and check them out but they also have plants for sale online it's a curious and right now they have two locations which is nazareth and the other one is clinton new jersey please check them out and you can get more information at curious i'm going to be working with jenny on some other projects as well so you will see us kind of creating a vibe and some things going on in nazareth we're really going to help kind of revitalize and get some things going on in Nazareth. So if you want to, please check out the Curious Planaholics in Nazareth. Support local, support us. They support the podcast. Thank you so much for coming on as a sponsor. Yeah, he's pro as fuck, man. All right, I'll just uh, roll into this Never Again studio. I have no clue what episode this is. Welcome to Never Again Studio, man. How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you? <laughs> the last time we podcast was probably JCE. When this was in Bethlehem, which was the first studio, because I don't know if you ever came back when we were here. I don't think so. Uh, in Bethlehem in Cheers. the basement. This Cheers. is your beer? It's my beer. Yeah. Yeah. Nat's uh, Light. Bethlehem in the basement down the street from the AA, like where all the people were out That's front fun. for like their meetings and stuff like that. Yeah, it was right next to, well, no, the AA, they lied to us and they told us nobody was in the building except for us, yeah. which wasn't true because no one knew what we were doing. Because it looks so odd that we had all this shit going on. Yeah. And then when I got in there, there was, they were hosting NA and N, NA and AA meetings. And then there was junkies and alcoholics trying to bum rides and cigarettes out front. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's... I remember just showing up with like a case of beer and being like, you guys know where the <laughs> yeah. studio is? And everyone's just like, you know, ripping, yeah. their, ripping their grid out front going like, come on, man. Like, 
fucking rubbing it in, you know? I'm trying to think if I was even drinking at that time. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. We used to go to Hometown Heroes beforehand. Yeah, Hometown <laughs> Heroes. Yo, I can't believe that place closed down and turned into like a tea shop. It's a tea shop? It was a call. They, from what I understand is that, and when I read the write-up is, he was having trouble putting asses in seats because he said, um, and this is probably all wrong. This is a reading a memory or a memory from reading it in some shitty paper. But he said he didn't have enough business because there was always things going on in Bethlehem. Like every Friday, there was like an event, an event, an event, an event. What a tragedy to have a busy town. <laughs> <laughs> so he said he wanted to turn it to a coffee shop, and then he turned sure. it to a coffee shop, and then it was open for like three weeks, and that was it. Yeah. It's a shame. It was a cool place. It was really cool. Well, I friendly. still talk about um, the sandwiches, uh, the Papa Allen or whatever it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were pretty good, man. Yeah, that was, I used, uh, Mumon Jer took me there. Uh, they had wings. Their wings were solid. Yeah, um, I liked everything they did there. But yeah, yeah the Bethlehem spot that was um, that was super early on. That was when I let the Mickey let Mickey Gall choke me out, and that video went viral. <laughs> But I had, oh, yeah. I had nothing I set up. Yeah, 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 Jason yeah. Ellis talked about it on the Jason Ellis show. There was very much... Uh, Back when he was still on Sirius XM. Yeah, <laughs> flying by the seat of your pants, just being like, I don't really know where we're yeah, going I, with I this. Yeah, I ate crickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a cool time. It was, yeah. it was a real cool um, time. Early, of, early days, man. Like yeah. I said, I don't know if we can air. Because uh, no. not all the episodes <laughs> got lost, and I have them, and somebody wanted me to put out like... Um, I would have to pro and it would take a couple days, but I'd I'd have to go through all of JCE and then like edit out like a best of Josh thing, which is what Corey wanted me to do. Because if I aired any of that now, um, it would not work well off the rails immediately. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Kanye two point <laughs> It wasn't. I, mean, I guess Josh was more like Kanye. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's more of a cool breeze. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, he was he was good man. What did um. Awesome. I'm trying to think it was just that, but I've been so interested in digging this out of you and I never had a chance and Corey touched on it a little bit, but you've gone so much further and it was myself and Josh who were with you when you first started mountain biking. Oh yeah. 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 It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so I had an old shitty bike I pulled out of a shed yeah. and Josh met us and we went two or three times and then you would just go ahead of us. And then yeah. we were like, yo, just go. We'll we'll catch up. And then you started going alone. And then you eventually didn't stop riding ever. And you were doing it seasonally and or all seasons. And then you started doing it outside in those uh the ones where you pick the bike up and you're running. Oh yeah, cyclocross. How did you get into that? Uh I have so many questions. So yeah, so <laughs> you remember riding in um <clears throat> maybe 2012 2013 that that was years of like coming off of uh only working on cars drink, yeah drinking in garages and it was like hey you're getting old enough <clears throat> some shit's gotta change health wise you know so it was like let's get back into something and it was never gonna be like football or basketball because i'm a jock well you used to play basketball a little bit but then didn't yeah. you screw your knee up yeah and yeah. i could just tell like while doing that i was like this i'm I'm just going to end up getting more surgery again. So it was like, screw that. I don't remember. I, I remember going to Cutters in Bethlehem and just being like, I'm gonna yeah, buy, I'm gonna Cutters. Buy Great yeah. people, John and uh, his wife, are, they're, they're freaking awesome. Um, so I remember just like buying a bike and eventually got into like mountain biking and then just, uh, I don't remember how I got introduced into actual cyclocross racing um yeah because I, I remember that summer you went all summer and you were doing your own thing yeah. and I, but i didn't look at it as any other way where i was like well nat always competed against himself he did it in football and then you know yeah. and even with the car thing it was always like you, you know even though it was a a crew it was individual shit you were doing oh yeah so then i was like ah i was like he just found his new car thing but it's yeah. with bikes and then it just then when i saw you doing it in winter i was like what a sick fuck. I'm uh, <laughs> leaving tomorrow to go to Connecticut to race in the fucking mud. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, but yeah, so like anything, I, I, I don't do anything half-assed, half unfortunately. And when I jump into something, it's normally money's not an object, time's not an object. Uh, losing whatever, you know, it's just yeah. like I'm 
all consumed, and I just got completely consumed with it was fun to watch bikes because it was healthy yeah. too it was and i was like this is great i can kind of stay healthy and then it's like oh man i'd go race a bike and then drink eight beers afterwards i'm like well it's kind of fucking healthy but well when i was <laughs> not, when not i was really. at like peak performance of where was when i was sober and i moved to virginia and i was running eight miles a day but when i went down there i was able to ride a bike and I didn't realize what kind of shape you get into till you start riding a bike all the time. And I was riding the bike probably 15 to 20 miles a day because I would ride it to, I had three jobs and I lived in the city and I rode my bike to every job. So like yeah. every day I was riding. And then at one point it didn't matter what I was eating because I was burning so many calories. And then it was just like, this is crazy. And I've never been healthier and I, I like i try and get back to that version of myself but it's so hard because i've gone so far the other way but like when i was riding every day and that was my only means of transportation that is the best i've ever felt my entire life yeah. i was like clothes were falling off like i was like i, I remember i had a, a drawer of mediums they're still back there because it was only a Isn't couple of months <laughs> <laughs> it was large i went from i went from XL and then that was the first time I was like I don't wear fucking large shirts but I had to because I was so thin it wasn't because yeah. I wanted to it was like XL's looked ridiculous on me <laughs> yeah that's what happens really quick so like in 2013 ish I started just trying to race bikes seriously and started going all over the place was that the when you were racing was that the outdoor ones where you're like carrying yeah. the bikes and shit yep yeah so it's almost like a it's like a drop bar road bike but off road that's what the uh cyclocross racing is and then there's like barriers to overcome sometimes stairs whatever boom hop and if you skip that you had to drink a beer correct well that was the like early the, one yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah in the in the thursday night it's called fifth street uh cross in Emmaus is like a training race Thursday nights and that was like it was like man you can do this kind of racing and it's really fun it's almost like a little party and then like on the weekends are like real races and it's really um competitive so it's great so which is not right only, up your alley you yeah it's great. <laughs> and then I could spend well, one of the things I found like I was I was uh getting more and more in shape but the thing that I I didn't notice right away was not I, I I was sleeping more. My mood was better, and it yeah. wasn't just because I was working out or or whatever. But going out on two three hour rides five times a week, you know, fifteen hour weeks, whatever it was, no headphones, no nothing. Like you're just letting your brain. That was crazy because I asked you that once. Yeah. I said, "What do you listen to?" And then Not you're like, "It's dangerous." The, the car that's about to run me yeah. over and kill me. And then I thought about it. I'm like, "Oh no, I didn't wear headphones when I drove Oop. in the city." No, especially like mountain biking, just uh, uh, hearing the rhythmic tires yeah. crushing twigs, whatever, and um, you know those bigger gravel races that I've I've done um, in in 2013. So like, it, this is a weird uh, thing. Like, started riding bikes or uh, mid. 2012 and the guys at the bike shop cycle fitters and forks were like hey you know you're a pretty athletic I guy remember this. <laughs> uh they're like you should go do this race called dirty kanza it's in kansas a 200 mile gravel race what did you like, think immediately when they asked you that i, I just say yeah i don't care <laughs> like yeah sure they're like you know it's one of the hardest races like in the fucking world and i'm like i'm in that's cool mm -hmm. like people have been training for decades to like just to finish this thing and I was like, yeah, I'm in. And I, and I went. I got my ass, like, just destroyed. Like, it's a long day. When you're doing, like, massive endurance things, like, you have to train yourself. Like, uh, that that year it took me 17 and a half hours to finish 200 miles. All on farm, unmaintained gravel roads. You were riding at night, too, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to have a headlight. Like, and there's no support. How did you train for it? There. Long long days and it wasn't enough it wasn't at that time so like i just hadn't been riding enough yeah you know and you just it takes years to build up all this muscle memory it's just like anything else like lifting weights or playing basketball yeah or like you know it just takes that long to like hone a craft and so that year 17 and a half hours i finished and i finished out of pure stubbornness yeah like i was like i, I felt so bad at like the 150 mile checkpoint that i was like I have to finish because I never want to fucking come back here. This is awful. And if I don't finish, 
I'm going to have to come back here because I'm so stubborn. Yeah, I did that with a half marathon. That's right. why my knees are shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just keep the strong. I didn't even body. train. It's fine. It's good for you. <laughs> I just did it. Yeah, just like, now I'm like, you're like, my knees Joe are bone Strummer. on bone. Yeah. Joe Strummer, just go out there and run a fucking marathon. <laughs> I, I beat other people who I was supposed to be training with, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Cowards. that was. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that made them feel great. They're like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> it was Kelly Pattis, and I'd still bring oh, it up. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, I would. Uh, yeah, every time I talked to her, I'm like, remember I didn't train and you did? she walked yeah so like uh after finishing that year it was just like one of those things where it's like man i'll never come back do you get hurt is... doing that i don't think so um i mean like there was private parts numb by like yeah. hour six or seven same thing just haven't honed the skill. you haven't spent enough time doing this but i was I, my mental game is just yeah shit that i'm just like i don't care what's what's cut up what's whatever it's I'm weird like finish. the the group of who we're all friends with that you know from notre dame and everything that like we've all hung out with it's very similar that we all have like the same mindset of that yeah it's applied to different things and some in wrong directions but like <laughs> everybody kind of has that stubbornness of yeah. like finishing and like not giving up and like just you know being stubborn being very like uh overly focused on getting shit done yeah yeah, and that's what uh, I I left that race and I was I, I cried at the end, yeah. like I, I it was just such an emotional thing that like you're so who went out with you? Did Sue go out? No, just no, you. No, a couple guys from the bike shop that yeah, I had just yeah, met like yeah, six yeah, months yeah, ago, yeah. and they're like, "Who's this fucking weird guy in the van that says inappropriate <laughs> shit all the time?" Like, you know, and I was just like, ah, they don't really get my sense of humor yet. But nothing get, worse. They'll Not get there. worse when yeah. they don't get it right away. Yeah, yeah. This is well, gonna be awkward. A lot of quiet moments <laughs> <laughs> in that in that drive out there. Um, but it was great. It also just sparked more interest in in riding, and I can tell that this is the time of year right now, like winter time, where my outdoor riding starts to drop a bit and and everything i get a little more tense i get a little more you know I, i'm not a happy camper, yeah i mean i'm going you know? through that with the hiking yeah because it's not yeah. uh and i went i went far into hiking last year the furthest i ever went we did 18 miles on the appalachian i saw a porcupine i didn't even know they're native to our I area saw one, uh, mountain biking at racetown this <laughs> it's year. crazy it's the coolest dude. thing it's the coolest uh, thing. um I, w I found somebody to go with um I, I was gonna go alone and doing stuff like that i'm like my dad had like a couple serious conversations with me where he's like yo dude like you probably shouldn't you probably shouldn't go out there by yourself and when you get out there you don't realize how alone you are till like yeah. you don't hear anything your phone doesn't and then work the, yeah and then the animals out there they're they're it's not like you know like i went over on the eastern rail trail and i think i was sending you pictures there's like 60 deer around me oh, yeah. and yeah. then that's not how it is out there the animals aren't used to people so they're just like it's a weird interaction with the animals. They have it? a they have much more room to just yeah not, not be like around when we saw it, that porcupine, you know? like it didn't care we were there, and it wasn't scared by us, and it just like looked at us and kept going. And um, when I went with Fessler, we started doing like um, I originally started doing it when, with draws during the pandemic because she knew oh, yeah. I needed to get out of the basement, so we started going on sections of the Appalachian. And then I always wanted to complete them because we only did small sections when I was like, oh, well, we started here and did four miles. Yeah. I hate like going in and coming out. Like I have to have like a, a loop. Yeah. It, so, it like bike really bothers well. me. The route, the route should be a loop. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll get a, when we, yeah. I used to go with Muma at Jacobsburg when we would mountain bike, it'd always be like, all right, well, let's start here. It wasn't ever in and out. Yeah. But yeah, then when I got into the, um, just to further down on and the 18 miles and all that. I went from Wing Gap to Delaware Water Gap. Yeah, that's and the goal of, was supposed That's a lot of foot action. Dude, it like... would, they said 13 miles on the on the app and I ran out of water because it was it was the hottest day of summer and someone was like yo you shouldn't go and I'm you like plan this I'm like yo I'm like I'm like this is the only day that it lines up for the two of us cuz you know how it is with scheduling people yeah. to go out on rides and stuff. But um now that I don't have that, and like the last time I went over to Jacobsburg, like I was like, "Fuck, man!" Like I'm gonna have to start going inside. So I went to LA Fitness today, and it's not the same it's at all. There's too many people there, and then like if kids start yeah. coming in, I, I'm like, "I gotta get off this treadmill." I don't like all these people here. It's uh, it's not it my sucks. jam. Uh, I, I get that all the time. It's like, well, it's winter time. Like, go go to the gym or go do this. And I'm like, I don't want to do that shit. I spent a lot of years doing that shit, like working out for football. Yeah, and all these stupid full fucking gyms sports and yeah, music, yeah. and I just don't. It, it's not my. It also doesn't exercise my. It doesn't turn it down. I just want to hear nothing. I just yeah. want to hear wind and and whatever bullshit 
drums up in my brain i can work through it and i can think a lot i i design a lot of clothing and like what i do with the business is yeah. like when i whatever I'm out whatever like comes road up time. yeah whatever comes up i i can't control it like i'm just riding and i'm like oh look at that yeah yeah, yeah. oh another car that smells like weed that passed me <laughs> <laughs> you know? and it's like that's comfortable you know whatever <laughs> but yeah that i just need that um and and it's it's i don't know it's it's, it's magic for me like it just yeah. it checks a lot of boxes it doesn't mess up my body too much. I'd uh, Low impact. suggest all to do it. I could actually use a little bit of impact, which would be nice. Like I, I still, I lack that uh, old mobility, man. When I go to chase little Clem around our dog, uh, I don't have the uh, I'm like chasing around the house. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. Settle down, old man. Like you're gonna lose a hip. Like, well, my back's so yeah. screwed up. I can't really run or jog anymore. So then I do like the hiking, which. I end up burning more calories than I am on a bike, but then it's like last year I just didn't get into the bike. And then I, I like kind of listen to myself now and I'm like, all right, well just hike if you're going to hike. Yeah. And then if you want to get back on the bike next year, get back on the bike. But I talked to, um, um, I know you guys know her cause she used to do yoga with Sue. Uh, she does the paddle boards. Um, yes, I can't think of her name. Kate or no, uh, Melanie probably. Yeah. There's uh, a bunch of them. Yeah. So she runs the paddleboard shop over at Na Naka Mixon. Melanie. And then does the yoga yeah. over there and yep. stuff. She, um, I was talking to her, like, that's something I want to get into, too. And yeah. then, like, rotate, like, the riding, the hiking, and then uh, the paddleboard. But that's, like, all low impact for my back. So I can yeah. still exercise. Yeah. And then, uh, and that was the thing. It's like, uh, I, I had a group that I played basketball with. It was fucking awesome. Because um, they were, were all older guys. But it was like, eh, we play for two hours on a Sunday, and then I come home and put ice bags on my knees yeah. or something. I'm like, this yeah, isn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's great. I love it. It's just not. It's not working anymore. Yeah. So now I found something that's worked. So now I can just completely be obsessive about that. Yeah. It's great. So where did it go then when you you did the crazy race, and then you're doing the kind of the the yearly riding? When did you start getting into like more serious competition? Uh. So yeah, like. Um, Probably by like 16, 17, 18, uh, you move up uh, these ranks. You know, you, you can do categories. And I worked my way into like the elite kind of uh, category where I could start really gauging, you know, you, you, you're in a slower group. You keep moving faster and faster and faster. And it's like, okay, I'm at almost as high as it can go at this point. Um, and that's really interesting because you are... And I, and I, I came to this sport pretty, pretty old, but like you're still putting in 15 hour training weeks to be well, like, that's always wild like is watching you like, uh, the pack, when you, you like know? post like the rides you go on, because yeah. what's funny is sometimes I would like text you and be like, perfect day to ride. Cause, yeah. Or I go outside and be like, ah, NASA's going to be riding today. Yeah. Like it's just those. And then what do you, as soon as you get out of work, you're just oh, right yeah, on the bike. Sometimes I'm just, what do you get uh, out at like two o'clock? Uh, usually two or three. Yeah. So yeah. Like, uh, during the summer, maybe a twelve to fifteen hour week, two hundred mile week, like every every week, and then my real I, I do a couple mountain bike races in like the summer, um, but I, I dabble in like road racing, but the risk reward uh, in like road racing is like it sucks. It's super fast. It's super competitive, and when you crash, yeah. you really get fucked up. Yeah. Um, so I don't do that that often, but the fall is when cyclocross season starts. So you fell in and, love with uh, that out of everything yeah, the most? Yeah, it was, it was great. Mostly on dirt. When you crash, it's not that big of a deal, but it's very hard from the gun, usually an hour long, full gas the whole time, just wild bike handling skills needed. And yeah, I got to, I got to get up to like a certain level where I was like in legit um, pro races. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like older to be in these like pro races and like not dead last. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a bottom 10 out of like 50 or 60 or something like that, which is like, yeah, okay. This is, this is, I just got my ass handed to me, but like, this is as fast as it gets in the States. And, and here you are, you're like, you're, you're kind of doing it, you know? And yeah. now I'm in like, I'm older so I can be in like age category Like when Pat's dad used to wrestle. <laughs> It'd be like the, uh, the old man wrestle. Did he used to wrestle with old guys? Yeah, I think there was like divisions where it was, uh, I could be oh, wrong, yeah, but I, I think I remember uh, Mr. Patton wrestled a couple times where it was like, 
they would go because I went That's to a couple wild. of like Kevin's opens or when Roger yeah, was yeah, wrestling, yeah. and then I think they would have like like they do that with in jujitsu is like there's oh, yeah, there's yeah, probably yeah. like three or four of the older guys, and then they'll just yeah. like compete against each other. I don't it's think it's really for anything, but yeah. they just aren't so going to go against uh, kids. Now I can at least I have the option. Like the local races, I can still be in the elite race or whatever, and that's and that's fine. But like in bigger um, races, I can go in like age categories and be with like forty to fifty year old guys, and it's still super fast because most of those guys are like ex pro guys, and it's it's really fast, and it's just a it takes some money, uh, you know, races cost money or whatever, but... It, well, that's what I was going to ask, is this when you... Because then, you know, it's kind of like I'm timelining it for just stuff from Instagram, but then I remember you putting out, like, you're getting sponsored by people yeah. for... Uh, yeah. I, I know Sue was doing it with you guys for... Uh, and then, so you were doing stuff with the the gym, and then um, Two Rivers came in and did yeah. something with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, is that kind of where it's at, where it's like you're at a high level, so you're getting sponsors to kind of cover gear and stuff? Yeah, so, like, uh, maybe, like... 2015 ish something like that we had like a local sram factory team sram's like a manufacturer of um equipment you know uh bike equipment and you know they would help out with all the equipment and bike sponsor equipment and now we just we got to the point where we're like ah, we'll just run our own little team yeah you know and we still have those connections with like uh bike manufacturers and you know parts distributors that like will help you out or uh, two Rivers being a sponsor for the team, you know, chipping money for um, clothing and stuff like that and give us beer and make beer with my freaking face yeah, on it. Yeah, I want to get to that. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so now we're just kind of the competitiveness on the actual racing side, at least this year is kind of it died down for me a bit this year um, because I went back to Kansas this year like a grudge match. The, oh, the yeah, thing, so you went back to it. Yeah, the thing yeah. that I said I would never do again, I did uh, almost 10 years later. So, like, I did that this year, and it just required so much training. It was in June, like the first week of June. Because now you know what you're getting into. You know what I'm getting into. And, like, the whole, like for the past couple of years, I'm like, I wonder what I could do now. It yeah. Took, it took me 17 and a half hours, and I was riding a bike for six months. Yeah. You know, and I was like... I wonder what I can do now. I could, I could. Was the bike the correct bike you would have used last time? Yeah, but even even in that ten years, the technology's gotten yeah. so much better. Like so much shit has changed, and it's like, uh, and that was a very niche sport at the time. Like not a lot of people were doing it. When I did it in 2013. That it's a gravel race. Um, there were 350 people that did it. This year there were 3,000. Like it's got that's crazy. It's gotten yeah. that that big so like when i did it in 2013 like it was very you're kind of just on your own all day there's no one out there you're in the yeah. middle of fucking nowhere um is it mostly just road riding and it's just like a it's path? all it's all gravel road like, like old farm roads back in the day track, tractor yeah. roads yeah. it's just the the gravel roads that split the tractor fields the only things that ride on them are either farmers and like farm equipment and cows like there's metal grade so like the cows don't cross over the roads it's it's you're very remote yeah. within like within yeah, like yeah, a half yeah. hour of the start you're in you know you're, middle of nowhere you're in the middle of nowhere do so, they have stations yeah uh they broke it up they had two checkpoints this year so like uh maybe like mile 75 and like maybe mile 150 or something like that and that's it like yeah. that's that's all you get you in get. trouble you just i guess you gotta bring your phone with you yeah, uh, you're either supposed to have someone there to support you because no one's going to drag you off of the course. No one's going to come pick you up. So is that another rider? Yeah, you're supposed to have someone local, but there's a big support group of this town that they're like, yeah. hey, you can pay us 50 bucks or 100 bucks or something like that. That way, if something happens, we'll come and get you. Yeah. You know? Smart. Um, yeah. So it, it, it uh, lets people in the town with this huge fucking race, make some money. Yeah. And, you know, so the amount of time it took me, I started training for that in like January and actually I had to get surgery on my finger in a cyclocross race of the year before the November before. Um, yeah. How I, long were you out with the finger? Uh, not uh, a couple days yeah. uh because i just got on a stationary bike and held up yeah. a cast and had all kind of stitches i was out of work for like three weeks um but i tore a tendon 
uh, in my finger in a cross race that I thought would heal and it never did. And I couldn't like squeeze the brakes. And I'm like, I'm going to this race in June. I got to get this, got to get this fixed, you know? So I ended up getting surgery in like January and like, that's like the, I'm like, I gotta start training now. Cause it's just flat out hours. You have to just put hours and hours and hours into it. So like the thing I hate to do the most is sit on the little bike trainer at home. Mm -hmm. My fucking hand up in It's the hard air. cause you start just thinking about time. It's even on the treadmill today. I was it's just terrible. you have the fucking thing out in front of you and I'm just like, all right, here we go. And then I'm like, man, I didn't even hit two miles yet. Yeah. And then I'm looking at the time and I'm like, where if I go over to Jacobsburg with Aquila, or uh, two hours goes like that. Yeah, or if I go over with Gina and the dog, yeah. like I know that if we park at Sober's Run and we go out the rail trail and we loop around and when we loop around and we're here and we're just talking and I'm listening to music and yeah. bullshit and talk about the coffee shop or whatever and then before you know it, I'm like, oh, we're at four miles. But if you're just standing there going and then they got CNN, they got Fox News, I'm like, I don't watch this shit. Why is this yeah. on at the gym? It's terrible. It's terrible. You're a mouse on a wheel. Just... <laughs> like, and I knew and it's, I if I don't to... do that, then but it's like then I'll just start getting weird. Weird. and it's like even if i go work out it's still not enough like i have to do that cardio that people like, think i'm uh, crazy i'm like dude cardio I, yeah. i'm obsessed with doing cardio yeah. it's the only thing that saved me when i was sober the um I, I i took that aspect of it i was like i hate being on the trainer i can do 45 minutes to an hour it's fine um do the ones that have like the screen help at all yeah, like the peloton yeah, or anything like that so is like that I'm easier doing, uh, I, i'm doing zwift which is like a video game yeah for bike riding uh and it's very helpful um and in my head, I'm like, here's what you got to do. Um, use this as like a mental builder. You know what sucks? Sitting on the trainer for four hours. But if I can sit on the trainer yeah. twice this week for Flip four hours and just fucking sit there and gut it out. And like working hard, whatever, but just focus and gut it yeah, out. Yeah, sitting on a stationary bike oh, for four hours. <laughs> you have to be mentally ill. Yeah. That's me. Yep. Um, so yeah, I had to do that for like two months and I think maybe in March I could finally, and, and it's also winter time, so like I, I'm a bit of a wuss. Like I don't I don't like cold weather even though cyclocross is always in muddy and cold weather. Um, so like by, my, by the time my hand heals up and I can finally go out, the weather is just kind of starting to break a bit and then it's 20 hours a week so at least two six to eight hour rides a week plus a couple little how do you map rides. it out uh because it's not like you can just be like yeah like if i go over to jacobsburg i know i can get into all right well if i got a half hour i can go up top all right well if i got an hour i can do the long loop and then you know you can do 15 60 miles hiking over at yeah. jacobsburg without repeating anything but like I know that because I'm on it, but to do that kind of mileage on a bike, you definitely got to start looking into shit. Yeah, so like I, I'll just get on like a Garmin Connect or whatever and draw out courses, and I have great routes from like the last time that I trained for this that like I know from like my house I can dump downtown Easton and go all the way up to past Jim Thorpe, all the way up to Whitehaven on the DNL Trail. It's boring. It's flat. Um, but it's gravel, so like you're used to this riding on this substance, and that's a hundred thirty, hundred forty mile out and back. Or I have a big Pocono Mountain loop, like you know, whatever. Just days that I know that I'm just gonna have to force myself to to ride at this power. You know, I have a power meter on a bike that like will tell me how hard I'm pedaling, and uh, or or I can go by speed or heart rate or whatever, and be like, hey, I want to try to. If, I, if I'm shooting to go back to Kansas and I want to do sub 15 hours, um, I want to finish before a, a big goal there was like finish before the sun goes down, yeah. beat the sun. So I was like, okay, how fast do I have to go for that? That's what I'm training for. That's crazy. And uh, so, But at least like, you know what you're doing right. now. So <laughs> it's like I got to hold this power or this speed for this long how much food do i have to eat how much you know how well, much that was a how much can i eat so like you you got to start training your stomach to just because you're it's disgusting if you ever looked at um there's videos on youtube and uh normal people sitting down at a table and they'll just be like today i'm gonna try to eat what a guy an average guy eats during one day of the tour de france and like the breakfast is like a bowl of fucking rice and ham and this and that. And like, it's like, you know, a 1500 calorie breakfast, two to 3000 uh, calories during the race, all these energy bars. And these guys are, by the time they're 
just past breakfast and like whatever and they're just average joes like us they're puking in garbage cans yeah they can't well that always hold that much food that always was like piqued an interest in me because you guys would go out and then you would hit those corner stores yeah hot dogs yeah. yeah um so like the hot dogs and then like i saw you eating the uh, the beef sticks and stuff and then like when i started researching it a little bit because i was starting to look into hiking and i think i was even texting you about it a little bit you even hiking it's like you know we brought beef sticks we brought uh the, the peanut butter and jelly the um, they're hard to get anymore uh, uh the crustables the, yeah the uncrustables yeah, we brought and then yeah. um so we brought stuff that like b bananas but like we brought stuff that like would keep us going and then like we ate it and then you we would find ourselves being like man I, we probably should eat again and then like your body's like burning all this stuff because when i go over to jacobsburg i'm not doing that like i'll hydrate with my camelback but like at this i'm not like eating energy bars and when you start getting into longer miles you almost have to start doing that shit yeah and you try to eat um i i can never do a lot of like sweet stuff like every now and then i could have so what do you uh, eat when you go out for just the training just a regular like five six hour ride i'll um maybe uh pb and j i'll bring yeah. or I, I mean for a smaller i call those smaller rides yeah yeah <laughs> you like come out for seven <laughs> yeah. hours settle down dude <laughs> um you know just like a regular cliff bar and stuff like that on regular training rides but on these bigger rides the more real food you can consume the less you'll be tired of consuming it so if i would have like tortilla wraps with like ham cheese mustard and pickle or something just like super small and like cut up in little things and yeah where do you keep them in my back pocket yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah during this yeah. race i actually have a a bag like on the bike that yeah I, I can stuff a bunch of stuff into stuff a bunch of stuff um but yeah the more i i started learning that like the less sweet shit i can handle uh, uh the uh, the hot dogs and like beef jerky and shit like i always ended up after a long day like that i always ended up craving more salty stuff because yeah. the drink you're using is kind of sugary yeah and what do you what do you what do you put in liquid in wise it's not just water is it no uh so that's changed a lot too so like a, you know gatorade ish sports drink bullshit eventually like you can't drink that for 10 hours <laughs> oh, no. you know what i mean you have to drink two 24 ounce bottle two 24 ounce bottles like every hour and a half or something like that you can't you, you just can't piss just well, you, you have to drink that, but it can't be like Gatorade. But I'm you saying, just, did you get off the bike to piss? I think I did once. Yeah. But, but you're sweating you're it just, out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they actually have drinks now, too, that are like super high calorie and very low taste. And it's super helpful. So like a bottle would be ah, like... so you're getting your calories in on the drinks. Right. And yeah. it barely tastes like anything. And it's some crazy science uh dextrose cluster bullshit i don't know it works yeah um so i would have to eat less and be less full and that was a big problem the first year i was there i remember at like mile 150 i was like i feel like i have to go to the bathroom but i can't even drink the only thing i can have is water so i ended up like having a whole yeah i didn't even nose. think of that because then you fuck your guts up oh when you're, you're out there you're far. done you're done you're done so like i got to the point where like i couldn't consume anything else i was holding my nose and like taking those like energy gels yeah the like, energy gels, and then just like water and you try to hold off on those until it's shit has really hit the fan yeah. if you're <laughs> starting on those right away you're gonna get gut rot and you're screwed um so i got to a point this this summer where i was like for the first time i think i have the long range diet dialed yeah everything was coming in uh, you know my training was really great my speed was great my power was great my nutrition was great and i was like i don't fucking you care. figure all the shit out on your own or just talking to other bike yeah, guys i have i have some friends that are just like uh uh my one friend celine yeager works for bicycling and like a uh, nutritionist and just like pro everything and i can bounce stuff off of her all the time and there's there's so much information like on the internet yeah you know what i mean like how to make a bomb i mean uh <laughs> You know, there's there's so much shit out there now and free shit. Yeah. You know, like coaching. No, when I start, I mean, good, when I was asking like, you about the hiking stuff, I started looking it up and I was like, so what should I stuff. take hiking? Yeah. And then like, what should you know? What are the main things I gotta figure out? And then yeah. like, you know, when I when I started hiking the Appalachian, like I took it very serious. Like I was like, yo, like you can't fuck around up here. People die out. There. Yeah. Like yeah. we were even up at one spot and like my legs were a little like 
tired from wobbly yeah i'm like we were on the ridge and like i slipped a little bit but i slipped back and i was like man if i would slip forward i'm like my fucking top heavy egg ass could have just fucking went over the hill and then mm. i was like man i'm like that those are the moments or or like when we i ran into i was dude i was so dumb i went out to uh i went up to carlos's cabin up at lake ariel mm -hmm. and i went hiking alone on a trail called bear barefoot sounds safe and i thought it was just her bear paw trail and i was like ah, it's probably just shaped like a bear paw <laughs> dude i ran into this fucking bear alone i had nothing on me except for a camelback and that was some fucking eye-opening bullshit everyone's like oh it's a black bear i don't care what you say it was the size of a volkswagen i fucking my heart rate went through and this has happened to me twice now when i almost drowned when i was at the outer banks um when i hyperventilate it causes an asthma attack Ooh, no shit so like if my adrenaline goes up i now know that like it causes me to like that's good but so, then that, so you can run away really but easily. then when that happens an asthma attack kicks in so i'm hyperventilating i have an asthma attack and i can't control anything because my adrenaline's through the fucking roof Jesus. so like i'm seeing this bear and i'm like Aah! and then i turned around and as soon as I turned around, it was every Joe Rogan podcast being like, don't turn your back on a bear. And I was like, <laughs> motherfucker. So I had to turn around and it was it was slow motion because I was like, I don't know if it's running at me. All I kept picturing is like the scene from like the Revenant or whatever it is where uh, uh, it just the bear just totally trashes Leonardo DiCaprio. No. <laughs> <laughs> so like I turn around and, you know, the bear was just crossing by. It definitely knew I was there, but like. I luckily was coming around a turn. So like I was able to back and put trees between me and the bear. And then I walked backwards. And then when I felt it was safe, I picked my pace up to the car. But like, dude, when, when I started doing that, like I started really like, that's probably the last time I just treated everything like it was Jacobsburg. Yeah. Because Jacobsburg is Jacobsburg and nothing else is like that. Like, I mean, you, uh, it's you, a state you, park. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you you yeah. break your ankle out there. <laughs> yeah, you're dude. screwed. You're Snakes. Screwed. <laughs> so, like, yeah. um, I started like really researching like what I should be taking with me. And then, like, you know, and then you learn every time. Like, the last time I didn't bring enough water. And I was like, I could have left this, this, and this behind. I could have brought backup water. I should probably get a bigger bladder for my camel back and then i was just like all right we need to figure this out like we're done for the season we were gonna try and go out and get one more in but fessler's doing his own thing so next year when i go i'll probably get a bigger camel back and like you just you know I'm, it's like when you went out on your thing it's like i never did 18 miles we went from wing gap to where you know right where you get on 33 there and the bridge is there mm -hmm. we started there and we ended up at dave's uh coffee shop Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it dumps right into the gap there. I but did like some uh, training rides and started out. Dude, there. I didn't realize that place that place is dope. I wanna I wanna stay overnight at that uh that deer had la, 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 uh the blues <laughs> the bar jazz there. Place. Yeah, 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 they said the rooms are haunted. Yeah. It's a um, pretty cool place. Yeah, you, you need to start taking shit like seriously when you start yeah. getting into like more serious miles and you know, you, yeah. even and we're old I, enough where you need to start out, paying attention to getting hurt. Yeah, when I go out, even just on training rides, sometimes I'm like, "Hey, you're just by yourself, and yeah. you need to have a certain amount of shit with you." Like, God forbid, you get hit by a car, or even and you get a flat tire. And we like, came you from have to have all this stuff. We grew up at a time where like people didn't give a shit about that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I like we would just go into the woods, and our parents, you know. My parents cared, but like we go on bike rides and not tell them what we were doing. Oh, yeah. You know all the dumb shit we did as kids, but I, I feel like kids are more monitored now with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Where like we were kind of just like left alone to well, figure have, figure uh, life out. They have a bailout <laughs> too. They got a cell phone. Yes, most of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Didn't have that shit. Yeah, dude, know? that's wild. We would yeah. like go out for like seven hours, and then my parents. My, I remember one time I went jogging. And it was when I got into jogging. It was the furthest I've ever jogged. I think it was 12 or 13 miles. I just started in Bushkill. And it was one of those times where like, and you probably know how it is. You're just going out for a ride, but it's like the perfect ride. And you're feeling good and everything. So yeah. you just stay out. Mm -hmm. I can stay out. Oh, so yeah. I kept staying out. And I stayed out too long because I ended up having to walk like the last two miles. But no one could get a hold of me. My parents thought I got hit by a car. And my dad and her were driving around. And you're just, like, you're just yeah, living I'm the just fucking like, dream, right? Like, like, Best day ever. Yeah. <laughs> I got home. They're like, what were you doing? And I was like, I was out on a run. I Setting told you. Setting a PR. Because I, I used to not take my cell phone. Yeah. Uh, or I mean, it was probably next cell phones back then, but like well, I didn't want to be bothered. To run yeah, with. they bounce around like because yeah, like, dude, that was so long ago. They didn't have the iP. It was I had an um uh, the music thing, so it oh, wasn't yeah. built into the phone at like the time. Like a nano. It was um. It, what was the what was it? The iPod. Yeah, iPod yeah. minis and yeah. So like I had that, that on my yeah. arm with like the strap, but like I didn't like taking that and a phone. I don't know. I was like being light when I'm out doing yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. 
this uh so like getting back to just like you said with a big camel back like there's there's so much stuff that like you know you, you have to research to go and do these big rides and whatever and it's like man i need uh all this stuff that i had to carry with me uh to, to do you be do camelback or bottles of water um the first time i just did bottles yeah uh this time i did two bottles and a camelback because it wasn't going to be super hot if it was going to be really hot i may have rethought that because i'm having that thing on my back all day and i'm really just sweating but yeah. i was like it's gonna be overcast that was a, that was a great thing so like heading into the race i looked at the weather and i'm like i didn't even think okay, about cool. the weather yeah because it can the first year i went out there there was a hundred mile stretch where <laughs> cause, because sun. you're on these farm roads so there's no there's like very little turning you know you just like go straight for fucking eight miles I'm like, okay and then you make a left and then you make another right and go straight for eight miles like it's you're just it's a big grid you j and you can just see for miles so like the first time i was there it was a 30 mile an hour headwind for like 100 miles so you're putting oh out God. this effort of like seven or eight out of ten where normally you'd be doing 15 16 mile an hour and, I, and you look down and you're doing like eight and you can just hear the wind just like destroying you and you're like this is gonna fucking take forever uh, like it's, it's soul crushing there's yeah. been years uh where it rains and you're just in mud now. It rained this year, and you had to pick up your bike and walk for fucking two miles. Like, Ugh. Just is what it is. They're unmaintained roads, yeah. you know? So, yeah, there's so much... I, I put so much time and effort into just making this, like, this is the last time you're going here. You're going to fucking kill it. Uh, it's you said a, that last time. That's yeah, true. <laughs> it's a... It's a 18 hour drive out there like in Poria, kansas whatever so like i got two other teammates that are going which is great they live in new jersey they're gonna pick me up we're gonna head out so they uh they're showing up to my house like tuesday morning sue wakes up and she's like hey i i got covid and i'm like that means it means i have covid i'm like I'm fucking working <laughs> all, you know, well, first yeah. off we were like, oh my God, we go, we went two years <laughs> yeah. without this shit. And I'm like, oh my God. So I start texting and I'm like, well, I haven't even tested yet. We ran out of tests in the house and I'm like, fuck, what the hell am I going to do? The race is like Saturday. Yeah. And, uh, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Uh, my teammates like show up, I'm texting and I'm like, Hey, uh, are you guys on your way? They're like, we're down the street. Yeah, we're at the we'll be there in five Mall. <laughs> they pull up. And they already drove an hour just to get to my house. Yeah. And we're heading out west. And uh, I'm like, hey, you guys just got to go without me. And they're like, why are you loading up your truck? And I was like, I got to drive by myself. I, I, if I get you guys sick, I'm going to feel fucking terrible. Like, Sue just tested positive. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no fucking way. And I'm like, they're like, well, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm loading shit in the car and I'm fucking driving out there and I'm going to see if I'm going to get sick or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You're going to find like, out in 18 I'm gonna hours. I'm going to find out on the road. And they're like, well, what are you going to do? And like, we've already booked hotels and an yeah. Airbnb and we're going to split all this stuff. Yeah. And I, in my head, I'm just like, I'm so fucking stubborn. That I'm like, I'll, I'll sleep in the car. <laughs> I'm just doing, I'm doing all my own shit. I'll get all my own hotels. I'll just, I'll drive 18 hours <laughs> yeah, straight yeah, by yeah, myself yeah. like a fucking Typical mom. Nat. Right. And I was like, no, I'm going I'm to gut it out that's it so they were just like okay <laughs> like they were just weirded out and i'm like i'll i'll see you on the road you know and then i it, it that did they whole did they week, question like it was anyone being like yo just ride with us i would i wouldn't do it yeah like, they were like eh, we'll probably be we're gonna sit in a car together for 18 yeah. hours if so if I you were sick, sick they the were same definitely thing gonna get that sick. i i know how hard i worked at to be as fit as i was at that for that exact race and if I were to ruin it for somebody else, I would have never. That sucks because it fucks you know. with your head starting off like that. So I, as I'm driving by Pat Garrett's uh, <laughs> Roadhouse and Doskin I want to stay there too. I want to yeah. stay there. I want to do a little bit of content, to. just staying at like uh, weird, weird. Yeah, spots. like just uh, yeah. you know, like maybe do Roadside a pod miniature. Yeah, village. like just do like a shitty podcast and yeah. you get drunk and like Pat Garrett's <laughs> hotel have a couple of you know, fucking deer skin. Yeah, like coat. meet you and Bobby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it could be pretty good. So yeah, I end up uh, I end up just pack, shop too. packing up all my shit in the car, and I, and and Sue's like just feels terrible, you know. Yeah. She's like, oh, I probably gave this to you, whatever. So like, it takes me a day and a half to get out there. Um, and every night I'm just getting my own hotels and eating like. Cars. Did you test it all? I did all week. 
And it just um, took what came kept coming up negative. It kept kept coming up negative. You're like, no, and I'm supposed like, to have it. And by like when by like the next day, yeah, I'm sick as a fucking dog. Ah, negative, negative, negative. And I'm like, I have it. There's no fucking way. Like, and in my head, I'm like, I'm counting the fucking days. I had it Tuesday. Yeah, you know. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. Test again, test again. And every day, I'm I'm literally like stopping at a fucking random Walmart in Oklahoma, getting a test and a bag of oranges. Like, so in a way, I'm doing this whole week, not a beer, not a, you know, I've yeah. kind of cut a lot of that shit out anyway and was losing some weight. And like, I think between the stress of, I was crying in a fucking hotel room like Thursday night. That shit's got to fuck with you, man. I was so fucking sick. And I'm on the phone with Sue and I can't even talk because I'm just like, I just spent six months of my fucking life preparing yeah. fucking for this huge fucking race, which ultimately means absolutely fucking nothing. I, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, context yeah. But not life, to you. But like for me, I was just like, dude, I, I, I wanted to do this thing and I could like, I could tell I was fucking sick. And uh, the race is like Saturday. And I, I'm just like bawling on the phone, and my teammates are constantly texting me, They're like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Man, just don't worry about it. If I'm there, I'll see you on the see you at the start line." Yeah, yeah. what a weird trip. Now it's supposed to be Dude, like a bro, and I'm just like car side carry out at Applebee's every yeah. fucking night, like eating the shittiest. I'll have your steamed yeah, broccoli yeah, in a yeah. bag. Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. please not have the kids rub it on their genitalia before <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they put it in the to go? I will pay extra. I'll yeah, tip very yeah. well uh so yeah just like eating shit not i can't be around anybody because i knew i was sick friday i was feeling slightly better i'm in kansas i spent like a thousand dollars for fucking two nights in a hotel because the whole town is booked yep so like all I'm, your shit's I'm getting, already booked it's booked a year it's booked now for this year's race and like i'm calling ahead so like all these bike vendors they they sew everything up every airbnb every everything i'm calling every fucking hotel I, the closest hotel I could find is like two hours out. This race starts at like five in the morning or six in the morning or something. So you can't even like do that because it's fucking. I'm a leaving ride. my phone number, name and number with every hotel, hoping that someone cancels. And I'm like an hour out of the town, and some phone call comes in. She's like, "Is this Nat? Yeah, we got you a hotel room." They're like. It's like four hundred dollars a night, and I'm just like, I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, you're fucking high. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, yeah. yeah, whatever, man. So, guy, you guys got breakfast in the morning. But at that what? point, it's probably a relief that you actually have a place I'm, to stay. So you're kind much, of on track. Yeah, I'm so much money in, invested in this yeah. already that yeah. I'm just like, here we are. You know, like whatever. Um, have a great night's sleep. You know, Friday night or Thursday night. Friday, I actually get on my bike. I can ride a little bit and i'm like it's also back in my mind you're the same way you got bad family heart yeah you got heart issues i got a little heart thing going on and in my head i'm like man all these guys are getting fucking uh weird heart palpitations after having covid or like i'm gonna do one of the most like intense cardio things you could possibly do and you see people like fucking dying from the shit. I got like, COVID oh, bad. Yeah. I had I had it down here. I was um, worried about that uh, when you're. I, I ran into your mom. She told me you got it like a year. I got it. Or I got it early on. Early survivor when it was bad. I yeah. like to tell everybody that because uh, it was not how it was later on, and um, it was brutal on my yeah. breathing. People were dropping food off. Uh, I didn't leave here. Um, and it was one of the most miserable times. I watched the entire season of Last Man on Earth. I'm <laughs> like, uh, uh, it was really the only thing that got me through it. Yeah. Um, but when I got done with it and I finally, put, like, it was early on when, like, you weren't allowed to hug people. Right. So, I saw like, your mom at the doctor's yeah. office. Yeah. all had masks on. It was very so, early. I went to Wing Gap and I paid a hundred bucks for a rapid test, which I'm now realizing is I think that was just uh, what was normal. They were just making people pay a hundred. Yeah. Somebody made a lot of money. Yeah. Probably retired mm -hmm. after COVID was over. That a doctor down there, <laughs> but I didn't care because I, I I wasn't going to not go see my dad with his health problems and or get any. I didn't want to get anyone sick. Right. And like that's the thing where it starts fucking with you. Where even if because then there was times after that where I was like I don't feel right, and then I would like have to go get tested. Then I was like fuck did i just get these 10 people that i was around today and it like really fucking bugs you out and then you like you want to be like no i don't have it and then like to put myself at ease i had to like test myself but when i was down here i told my i remember calling my mom 
and it was like a month after I had it. And I was like, yo, I don't know if I'm ever going to feel the same again. Yeah. And it, I mean, my lungs are still a little bit screwed up from it. I mean, I, I'm overweight and everything else, but like, it's still a work in progress to get my lungs back. Like I'm still kind of fucked up from it. So like the, rec I tell people like when COVID you can get through it like you're sick if you don't if, you know it depends on what co complications you have when you got it i had asthma and i was all right but my mom when they wouldn't it was early on too where they wouldn't give me any drugs they wouldn't give me they told me to take vitamins and i was like i i when i get when i have an asthma problem they have to give me um a z-pack and prednisone and the z-pack and the prednisone is what bl the prednisone blows my lungs out and i can yeah. breathe like a normal person so i kept telling them like yo give me the prednisone and they wouldn't and then i finally got on with my doctor and I, I yelled at him and then it was so uncomfortable he goes i'll give it to you and like that i was better yeah i was on the road to recovery i wasn't my mom was like you'd one because i didn't want to go to the hospital yeah. in my opinion is i sat here for two fucking weeks why would i take up the space for somebody that can't do what i just did give me my goddamn vitamins yeah. and my prednisone because that's not going to kill me yeah. So like right. I'm like you're giving Adderall to people like give, <laughs> give me my prednisone. Yeah. So like when I had to recover off that, it's not fun. And yeah. Keith just had it, and I said to him, I'm like, and he was kind of going through the same stuff. And I'm like, yo, the recovery is worse than having it because yeah. you got it. It's so hard to get back to normal. If you get hit hit with that shit, it that road backs long. Yeah. I think I was lucky that I, I so well you were also in shape oh, dude, and healthy was, and was, like yeah. you know you were putting in what was in your body this has happened to me twice so like uh I, I forget what the year was maybe like 2015 that I was training for like mountain bike nationals and uh like big national championship race working really fucking hard really drilling the training got shingles like, ah, out of dude, nowhere like oh my fucking sucks, eye dude. and it was awful it was really that bad that shit is the worst so this was kind of like the same thing I was I tested Tuesday nothing tested Wednesday nothing sick as a dog though tested Thursday two times I think sick as a fucking dog nothing wake up Friday I'm feeling better and I have like one test left and I'm just like I I'm also super conflicted cause like yeah, you I don't yeah, wanna get anybody fucks sick your like you know, I haven't been near anyone. Like, uh, I feel, I, I, am I being responsible? Am I being selfish? And I'm like, yes, and yes. Yeah, all I'm that doing, Catholic I'm doing guilt, all that shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing all that shit. Like, I, you know, you sit there and say you don't want to get anybody sick, but so I, I got one more test left, and I was like, all right, maybe I'll test like Friday night. You know, before that way, I know I'm going to the start line, crisp, clean, whatever. Yeah. I go and take a ride, and I'm like, okay, I feel. I, I do a couple like little efforts. I'm like, I don't feel any, I don't feel anything. You know, I feel okay, whatever. Friday night comes and I'm just like, you're just tearing yourself up about this. Like just, I just yeah, because you don't want to take the test. I don't want to take the test. I just threw that thing right in the fucking trash. And I was like, <laughs> I had, I feel, I felt like I had to make up my mind. I was like, are you going to fucking yeah. race or not? And like, literally you're going to stand at, it's an outdoor event. Like, yeah. you know, I'm going to stand at a start line with a bunch of people four or five feet away from me whatever for a couple minutes and then we're riding a bike yeah and i was like you're feeling better already tuesday to saturday i i made all kind of concessions in my head i was just like yeah that's five days you're good yeah you're ready to go so it's like so, it's so drastically changed at this yeah. point i, I showed yeah. up uh, at the start line saturday with like one of those buffs over my face and my teammates are just like you you doing okay and i was like I'm gonna fucking send it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you know, they we'll, probably we'll look, see. they probably just had conversations about how much of a lunatic. Yeah, you that, are. who just like we'll see. They 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 were just like yeah, just, just just go like fuck it. You're you're fine. Like no big deal. They were very not sensitive. COVID yeah, people and yeah. they were also like super exposed people. They had already fucking had it twice. Yeah. So like, yeah. Whatever, and that's why they were like, "Ride out with us." They're like, we already had it twice. Like, yeah, tell whole Dan was like, I, "I got kids, and and my wife's a school teacher. You know how many times we got fucking COVID? We yeah. had all, you know, that that guilt, that Christian guilt, that dog. Catholic guilt, doggy." So I get to the I get to the start line. It's it's kind of like a beautiful day, like uh, and and gun goes off, and I couldn't have had it rained for like two hours. It was super fucking muddy. It was a really fucking. You're like, I had my out. <laughs> right, I, I, and yeah, I mean, just getting pelted with fucking rain. The, fir the first, like, three hours are, like, beautiful, but then it just, like, started to pour. Sections we had to walk. It's a brutal Are you guys all event. keeping the same pace? No, nah, we're, we're split up, like, yeah. right from the gun. Um, 
I hook back up with my teammate Dan probably in like in the last like four or five hours. A uh, big crash happens in front of us. Fucking and when you crash, like you're on these bikes that have all the stuff on them. Shit just yeah. goes flying all over. It's a yard sale, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of like the race just went by. You know what took me seventeen and a half hours? Uh, Ten years before, it took me twelve hours. You did in twelve? In twelve hours? Yeah, fucking like, sick! Like it was Yo, fucking you're crazy. Wild. It was fucking wild. Finished with my teammate Dan. We even took like the last hour, and we're just like, yeah, what a day! Like we kind of like cruised yeah. in. Like we are just you kinda, watching your time the whole time? Yeah. So yeah. I got, I, you know, got a little Garmin, and and like after a couple, you know, hundred miles, I'm like, oh, we're fucking flying fucking moving and like the confidence is just like yeah yeah yeah, it's starting to pay off you know like whatever and like did you feel sick when you were in the middle of the race or was the adrenaline going no it's just yeah focusing there's so much um focus needed to you're riding in these huge packs um and this this style racing like is is really popular with people who don't race any other genres like like road racing where it's really tight and you're constantly bumping elbows with people yeah or mountain biking or whatever. So they're not very comfortable in packs. So there's a lot of crashes and it's it gets a little weird. Um but the race went by like really fucking quick. We're hauling ass other than like having to walk a couple sections. And you know, you're hauling this bike and then like we're we're next to like one or two of the pro women that are there and uh you know, the, a couple of them are they're, they're short small people and i'm like fuck you gotta carry this fucking bike yeah for like two miles i'd love to say that i can help you but i'm struggling and I'm <laughs> dying slowly here you know hey good luck uh so yeah i think uh me and my teammate dan we we finish in like 12 hours uh we're completely shattered you know no belly issues like you know you're you're destroyed physically but like all the huge things that were a hindrance 10 years before that weren't even an I, issue I, i'd worked out man i had fucking dialed it was fucking great uh i think we finished maybe out of like two thousand people like 130th yeah that's or crazy like that. so like we're beating what like, did the fastest what was the fastest time dude these these pro guys a couple guys from like belgium one of the usa guys and uh i think two guys from belgium and maybe a guy from the ne- netherlands did it in like sub 10 hours like yeah. just a little bit below 10 hours like fucking wild you like think people really are juicing wild. doing stuff like that? Yeah. 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 I, when I watched, uh, what was that, Icarus? Yeah, pretty wild, right? That was like where the guy was juicing to see yeah. what it does. And I then mean, it, these guys are also. Well, that like was a wild documentary fully, that like went completely yeah. the. These into, guys like, are Russian. Yeah, conspiracy. I, really did go down. I actually wanted more of crazy. what he was starting yeah. out on the, yeah, so the actual I. documentary. Yeah. Because that was um, like such a cool thing to do. I feel like that's. Uh, you know, in in Tour de France style racing, yeah. I think that's still oh, it's always going to be present. Um, I think it's less. I want to. I want to think that it's less. As a yeah. fan of the sport, I want to think that it's less. Um, but that's what what I always go back to with that because he was like, "This is what is humanly possible." Sure, is getting, and I think I even asked you about it, and it was like fifth, sixth is like was or what was it seventh, eighth was like hu- humanly possible, and everything yeah. over that is yeah, it's not real. Yeah, yeah. these yeah. Uh, these guys that were there, I mean, they were fully paid. Um, this is what they do for a living. Yeah, you know, uh, these guys were ex. It's wild when you, there's like guys, people that do those you know? tough mutters and those uh, those or no, what was it? The Spartan races where like the yeah. dudes like they get paid because like they they stay on the circuit. Yeah, it's a wild yeah. life. I don't really think they have a testing protocol. No, like absolutely that. not. <laughs> you know, a lot of the racing we do, like yeah. you, you can get you can get tested. You're in the pool of the team. USADA pool, yeah. like UFC. That's it. They can yeah. uh, they can they can come after you a little bit, but. These guys, uh, I, I, I tend to think that like most of them are not doing that uh, yeah. during these style races, but they're they're not like way beyond the realm of like what's possible. But for an average forty-one year old, I, th- I guess it was forty-two at that point, or I was forty-one at that point. Um, I, I, 
I, I don't think there was much else I could do. I have teammates that like want to go back, and I'm like, I, it's nope, not going to get any better. Yeah, it's not going to get any better. Like it's a fast. I'll cheer you on. Yeah, it's probably the fastest that's ever going to happen. You could go there, and it could rain. There's all so day. many. There's so many aspects. Why even try yeah. and beat that? Flat tires take forever to fix. Uh, you know, all these mechanicals that can happen. Uh, the weather could just be shit. It could be 110 degrees. There, there were years where it was like 100 some degrees, and 30 percent of the pack finishes yeah you know what i mean because everyone just gets sick gets freaking heat exhaustion or whatever you know like so it really that's wild it's like the perfect year and like we we finish i sit down on a curb i get changed i try to drink a beer and you're just yeah you know and i'm like i gotta call sue and let her know that i'm done uh from carrying my bike i didn't shut my phone off i think i just put it like on airplane mode but my phone was so fucked up that I like locked myself out of my phone for like hours. You couldn't even call her. And like, no, I couldn't do anything. I think she knew there was like a GPS tracking that, yeah. that, that you could do. So she saw that like we finished. So she knew it was like alive, but I was just like everything, your body's so fucked up. Yeah. You know, and you're, you're just, just like, Oh dude, yeah. like, you just can't. So like, I how long does it take to come down from that? About you want another beer? Yeah. So Sue, when did Sue find out? Uh, she she knew like uh, at like what time I finished and all all that happy stuff. And for some reason, like yeah, my phone was all all screwed up, and I'm I'm sitting on the curb like trying to eat these like tacos. Yeah, what do you eat? Because like you can't you don't thought, you don't get into a full meal after that, or is that later in the night that you can eat normal? Or like yeah, I how fucked I up tried, is your body? Your gut's so destroyed. Um, I tried to. I, I did eat. I think I got like three little street tacos. I How's think. your piss? Are you like pissing black? Are nah. you hydrated? Like <laughs> no, nah, I'm just not pissing at all. Yeah, like, it's it's a very you're 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 just so destroyed. You just did twelve hours of yeah. like you know heart rate buck forty five buck fifty for twelve hours like just. Um, Do you know how many calories you burned? Yeah, I think it's over like ten thousand or something oh like that. God. It's it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's really wild. Yeah. Um. So like you you really need and like now I'm like man I'm so happy to have real food. Yeah. What do you st- try? <laughs> what do they tell you to put it, back in know? like bagels and shit like that? Whatever. Yeah. yeah do they point, have food I, for you? At yeah. Least? There there were like some street trucks there, so it's like this huge festival. Yeah. Now, when it used to just be like nothing. Yeah. Uh, but now it's like this huge festival. It's very um. It's turned into, it's owned by Lifetime that like does like Iron Man and shit like that. Now, the guy who used to run it was very homegrown race. Now it's very, the production value is so much better. And it's like, eh, it's kind of cheesy. Um, I'm sitting there trying to eat like fucking tacos, have a beer. I think it took me an hour. I think I had a, I had a tube of sour cream and onion Pringles. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, these are so good. And then they're just like turning to dust yeah. <laughs> in my mouth. And I'm like, you're just breaking oh, them yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every time I grab one, I just... You're, you're like, so, God damn yeah, it. Yeah, you're so screwed up. And people are like, hey, man, great job. Like, whatever. And, oh, okay. You know, you're just... You <laughs> can't... Talk yeah, you can barely function. Yeah. Um, I went to... I didn't go to Burger King. There was like a really weird local... Um, like Greasy Dick's kind yeah. of uh, place. And I'm like, man, I'm going to get this burger and these fries and whatever. And like, I could, I ate like a quarter of it and yeah. just fell asleep. I ate the rest of it at like 2 a.m. when I woke up in my hotel room. I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, just woke up probably like yeah. some weird like sugar crash or something. Yeah. Just, you know. And I woke up uh, at like 6 a.m. and drove 18 hours home. It was a really good time. <laughs> oh my God. And you couldn't <laughs> even like just sleep in the back Let's of the go. van with those guys. Let's go. Yeah. Get on the road, man. Like, uh, it was a whirlwind of. of was that the last big thing you did on a bike? I mean, are you still like racing yeah. and shit? Yeah, I'm racing Friday. Yeah, we're uh, the cyclocross national cycle cross. championships. So I'm you're only... more, you're kind of just doing your cycle cross and then training in the summer and. Yeah, I I couldn't really. I tried to train for cross this year, and I think I was just so screwed up. Uh, it, it took me weeks. I don't know if it was post COVID stuff, whatever. Uh, I, I, I ended up never really testing like positive or whatever, yeah. but like I, I, I could tell that that, that had screwed me up. So yeah. like it, and it when you have while. COVID it's, it's, um, it feels like nothing you've had before. Like I kept telling my mom, it's I'm like, true. I feel poisoned. Yeah. Like you yeah. feel almost like, uh, 
like somebody uh, from like a medieval time put like a little potion in your <laughs> drink. <laughs> Get that turkey leg. <laughs> so gross. Got kicked out of a uh, medieval times when I worked for uh, OK Four Wheel Drive. I had a Christmas party there. You had a Christmas party at medieval yeah. times. Yeah, it was in like New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. What something. was it? Was it? What? I'm I, I'm sorry. I was talking about Pennsylvania. I was thinking Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. Oh, medieval yeah. times is yeah. There's one in New Jersey. There used to yeah. be a cyclocross race at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair yeah. called Swashbuckler Cross, nice. and they used to give you a turkey yeah. leg. Uh, yeah, when the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair was more of an outside thing. The yeah. Renaissance or um, Medieval Times was like the indoor one where <laughs> yeah, you can get drunk and thrown out. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, 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 we got through. Yeah, out. I, I always want to go there for a birthday party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like for some reason, like uh, normally I can, uh, I'm super excited about cyclocross season. It's very specific workout. Uh, very just psh, psh, like high energy stabbing. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, and I just I couldn't convert the all day trucker kind of power that i had to like yeah. this flash of like that's what you need for that so like i kind of resigned myself to the fact this year that i was like yeah i'm just going to race cyclocross for fun this year yeah the national championship and i'm gonna get my doors blown off um but i have teammates going there so i'll help them out yeah it'll be fine yeah, it's a more of a relaxed um, atmosphere. Yeah, of, uh, hey, hey, oh. yeah. of uh, you know, and going into it, you got nothing to prove. You did, you know, that insane feat at, uh, yeah. you know, getting sick like that, and then having to do it alone, and then like everything up to you having to do that was a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which I and I think it just. It I feel just like when you tackle shit like that, yeah. and it's the worst case scenario, when you go to make decisions about getting into other things, you're like, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't need uh, much. Uh, it, that that really took a lot. I I think out of me the the stress that I had driving out there, thinking I was sick, and like I, I'm doing all this as a way, like the the mental game that that COVID shit uh, that fucks with you, man. It, was it really fucks brutal. with you. Um, it just it's really like devil on your shoulders angel on the other like am i doing this right am i not doing this right like but at the at the um cards that i were dealt i was really proud at the the number that i put up yeah, dude, and i that's was just crazy. like uh it's not gonna get any better than that like uh i i think I, I had friends that day that were just like dude like texting me like once my phone turned back on um they were like that's insane like that number is is an insane yeah what'd you time, get the first year you know 17 and a half hours and then it was the, the second time you did it 12 hours and like eight minutes that's or crazy like that. to yeah, shave that really, much off but that's really how much crazy. i mean that's why i wanted to even talk about it of, yeah. that's a decade of training dude i saw when it whatever, started it's like, why i was always um intrigued on talking about it because yeah. it started mountain biking with yep. me you and josh yeah and then we even said like you went ahead and we were and we laughed about it and yeah. we're like he competes with himself and then when i saw it evolving into it i was like ah this is a new thing yeah. and then it's always interesting to see you go down those rabbit holes because of like what you did and with the low riders and the different stuff and like just you know hobbies in between all that and when we used to hang out and i lived with you and stuff and just seeing how creative you are when you go down these roads to see it go to that is like dude that's fucking nuts I never had and then to know other, you were uh... sick it's not like you're posting like yeah, i'm sick and yeah. i want to race it wasn't something i wanted to like broadcast yeah yeah, yeah. i would just cry on the phone to sue yeah but it's funny you said like uh competing with yourself i, I always I never, I, I thought the only sport that really existed for like um, personal, uh, you know, one man sport was like wrestling. And I did wrestle like really young as a kid, but eventually you get to the part where they're like, you better start losing weight. And it's a very weird sport yeah. when like you're cutting weight and like it's really fucking brutal. And I remember being on like a football team that sucked. Yeah, uh, I loved all the guys and like a, you, you know, like I was willing. No, I went to Sa I went to every I went to all stuff. of Rogers' games. They yeah, uh, same oh, thing for with Ada. basketball. I felt like uh, <laughs> I was willing to put in X amount, but it didn't really matter unless everyone else was yeah. willing to put in X amount. So like eventually, and and I had I had burned that candle at both ends, like all through grade school, all through high school. That like. By like the end of high school, I was already done with yeah. team sports. I was like, I'm fucking. Out. I love the sport, but I'm done with it. Like, I don't want to do it anymore. You know. And I used to catch a lot of shit from a lot of people for that. Like, I think I quit. It's like the quarterback of the high school team and quit my senior year. And it yeah, was no. Like, it's, I think that's when we started hanging out. I don't think my dad talked to me for weeks after that. Yeah, that was a really weird dynamic too. That it's like. 
what a weird school. Um, yeah. Mostly, mostly like rich kids. Um, and it's not like I was fucking uh, not well off or something like that. But it was like very clicky. And I loved all those kids. Um, but I used to like get a, a certain amount of shit that like I would hang out with you. Yeah. I, really well, see, fucking I, I, weird. Was, I was so weird coming like, in. Hey, man, there. you're on the prom uh, committee or whatever. Like, what are you hanging out with him for? I'm like, you ever hear some of his jokes? <laughs> yeah. Dude, dude's amazing. But like, like when I went over there, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. And I, because everybody knew each other from, which is what, like, I was talking to Katie yeah, about. From the grade school. Because uh, you guys all came up. The theater and, school. So when I, I remember being in there and I was sitting next to Sue Phil Seta and Scott Finney was behind me and the, I was like, oh, everyone knows each other. Yeah. And then I, and I think more at Apollo was on me other side but you guys had already gone through grade school together yeah, you, uh, most of the kids either like uh the nazareth holy family kids they have done eight years yeah uh the eastern catholic kids like where i went which doesn't exist anymore so but like even the like the were like catholic your grade and saint james kids up. were yeah. beginning to to meld a, a bit yeah they all they all knew each other so there was already built in stuff a kid coming from I public school. I knew Strobel. School. Strobel on the bus. That yeah. was that was yeah, the first exactly. person I knew. Like you're the you're the kid coming from public school with the weird leopard strap. Yeah, I, that was crazy you know I mean? too. Remember, I had fat people suck on the back of my book bag, <laughs> and uh, Mister yeah. what was it Haney or not Haney? Uh, he was a real mean teacher. Kutz ran him off the road. <laughs> Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, Tag was it Melheim? Oh, Melheim! Yeah, yeah Mr. Yeah. Melheim. Yeah. The Coots ran him off the road into a field. Jesus. Um, now Tag, Tag, I did have a problem with, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I was friends with Jeff Curry, and then, um, and then our lunch table, I think, was me, you, Curry, uh, Masseri, and Strobel. What an amazing set of. Uh, it's just so names. weird. That was the first time I, I, I'm, I was introduced to like Lebanese people. Yeah, like there was that wasn't in Nazareth. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, and then yeah. like that's when I first started like because we had there was one black kid that came in Merlin, which was Aquila's brother. Yeah, yeah so yeah, it's yeah. like that was like the only black family in Bushkill Township. Yeah, so it's like when I was in school, it was just all primarily white kids, and then when I went over there, it was heavy Italian, heavy Lebanese, and then it was like you started getting into mixes, and I was like, man, this is crazy. There's so many different people. It's it's funny because uh, I I see this as I get older now too that like people can't understand. Let, like mix with other people uh, from from other areas. I work with. Uh, I've spent like since graduating high school. I've spent all my time either construction, automotive shop, you know, uh, road department ish kind of thing. So working with mostly older, middle class like white guys, um, and like they 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 all came from like their own little little box, and they could never assimilate with like a, a another culture or something like that. Yeah. They get weirded out by like every little fucking thing. And like, I always felt like a fucking outcast there because like you're automatically assumed that like you should, you should think this joke is funny when the lady drops off her car and like, yeah, they, yeah, you know, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I'm just like, I, I, I remember going... really brutal to sit there for fucking decades and just be like, I'm supposed to think that that's like, <laughs> Dude, uh, I, I and like you automatically assume just because I'm a fucking mechanic or a construction guy that like you think this is funny, right? Like I'm sure you work at Home Depot. That I'm cool with almost every Same. inappropriate fucking joke there is when it's truly like a joke or like whatever. Like I, we, we both know our sense of humor is yeah. straight gutter trash, um, but truly just for joke value. And then, like, working with people who are not. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, there, I, there's another side. When to I lived in like, the city, off, when I man. lived in the city and came back, like, it changed my whole pers perspective on uh, gay people. Because yeah. um, one of my best friends down there was uh, uh, a bartender uh, who was gay. And um, we really hit it off early. And, like, we were, like... I, no one from work would go to his drag show. He was going to a drag show yeah, he was yeah. putting on, and I went with my girlfriend at the time. And that forever, like he was so appreciative that I I was the only one from work because everyone else was uncomfortable for going. Yeah. And then I remember when I moved back and I was like working in a kitchen, and this dude was saying this stuff, and I was like, "Bro, you need to leave the area." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "I'm like, you are yeah. so simple minded." Yeah. Um, it's just an echo chamber, right? Like, uh, you only know. What, what's around what, you what, 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 yeah what you're around like that's it that's why another reason why i love uh two rivers brewing uh and troy that owns a place uh i i don't, I don't know the date of it but they have a maybe like one saturday a month where they have or sunday uh they have what's called the tea dance which i guess is like historically like this uh 
thing that like the gay community used to do forever. It's like a, a big party, big blowout, DJ dance party, whatever. So like DJ Brad, I don't know if you ever met him. He'll go upstairs, two rivers, one Sunday, uh, one Sunday a month, whatever, and have a tea dance. And it is nothing but... You know, the dude, most, we started like, going up to the Woods Campground. Doing oh, it's fucking that. great. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I was <laughs> yeah. thinking about, too. I was like... We started doing food up there, It's great. Man. I saw the guy. I was at the tea dance two weeks ago because it was our friend Brad uh, and someone else's 50th uh, birthday. And I saw a guy there with the Woods Campground shirt on. And it was funny. Like, while I was there, like, I I feel like maybe I, it, it never truly, like, hit home kind of like it did. So, like, this was maybe two Sundays ago. Um, Saturday night was that like gay uh, shooting in Colorado at like that club. So like Sue's like, hey, don't forget uh, Sunday we're going to the tea dance. I've been to the tea dance a bunch. It's fucking great. Drag queens all over the place. Drag you know, shows fucking, are awesome. DJs, uh, DJ Brad's fucking awesome. Like it's just it's just a one of the most welcoming communities in the world. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, fuck, man. Like, imagine these people are going to this fucking dance. And, like, almost every time they go out, they're feeling like what I'm feeling. Like, I'm literally, like, I have a license uh, to conceal, carry, like, whatever. I'm like, fuck, like, do I, like, bring a gun to this thing? Like, I'm going to an event <laughs> it's that wild is now, now occasionally fucking targeted by yeah. whack jobs. yeah. It was like one of like I, I like I, I know that I know that exists whatever but I was like wow I'm gonna go to a place uh, you know I mean shit it's even like churches now like God forbid you go to a, like a fucking synagogue well there was that big shootout you know? at the church right over by Richard's house a couple of years ago right yeah 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 and it's just like man this is wild so like it's it's funny I'm I'm, I'm at the tea dance and I, we know so many freaking people there it's great and I'm like holy shit like. God forbid I would ever try to start shit here. I'm like, you. I go to one of my friends that's standing next to me. I go, you know, I was thinking about that shooting, like, whatever. I'm like, you see some of the monsters that are here? I'm like, <laughs> some of these dudes could start for, like, defensive line. Bears, baby. Enormous dudes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, our buddy Brad, uh, DJ Brad's a big dude. They're all, there's guys there. There was at least 50% of the guys there would mop the fucking floor with me. And I'm like, how could you come in here and start shit? Like, these guys when we started going up, four, and it was, <clears throat> like When we started going up to the woods, uh, I met John Adams and, um, his partner Dan through uh, Keith and Becky, and they started bringing me over for Sunday dinners, and it's the best time ever. They just—it's our sense of humor. They just John Adams will just rip you from head to toe, yeah. and then he'll just be like, "Ah, so what's up?" So like you know, he goes like he'll tear you down, and then just start like trying to figure out who you are as a person and stuff. So like Keith gave me the heads up, and we hit it off with them, and then they called me the one day, and we're like, "We totally got fucked on a food truck. Will you come up next week?" And I'm like, "Yeah, we'll come up." And it was wild. Like, yeah. there's just naked dudes coming yeah. up buying cheeseburgers. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I didn't know how Gina was going to be. Because yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, Gina doesn't go out. Like, Gina just stays girls, home. Girls feel completely yeah. safe there. So, like, <laughs> you know? after we, 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 the whole thing's over. And, dude, they spend money up there. Like, you got, like, they, first of all, it's not a campground. It's a fucking resort. Yeah. There's a, there's a huge stage they built for drag shows then there's like a pool and then the, like they've added on to the place for quite some time i realized one of my bike routes goes right by there and i never yeah i went the first time i went up there was um hold on i don't know what's going on with this watch um shut up robot it's a a paulie from uh was that rocky three <laughs> um or uh when paulie uh, falls in love with the yeah. robot um, <laughs> we talked about that on jce on like how sexual that was and nobody ever talks it about it yeah. um but yeah, when we went up there, it was like we were going home, and Gina's like, "I've had, e I've seen enough wieners for one yeah, day." Yeah, <laughs> you know. I, yeah, yeah. You, you get guys at the tea dance. They're like, "Hey, I get it. You're straight, but you're super handsome." I'm like, "Hey, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so are you. I hope you kill it tonight." But like, like whatever. There's no one. Once there, you like, like, once you break that barrier down, and like you're okay with it, and you just realize, like that was the big thing when I met um Sean in Virginia. Is like, you know, I was like going through some shit with a girl at the time, and then he like told me some shit he was going through with a guy and i was like it just registered i was like oh like 
this is this it, you're you're in love with him like i'm in love with her and like this is just normal shit What's wrong with that? and then like when that broke the barrier down like when i went out to center city with draws she was like she saw i was taking pictures for social media and i was like yeah i said when i go somewhere this is what i do and i said you know i get enough feedback that like people like it so i like and i i'm just, i genuinely like taking pictures with my phone and then she was like i'm gonna take you to pictures i'm gonna take you to bars where you can take pictures she goes do you care about going to a gay bar? I was like, no. I'm like, I serve naked dudes cheeseburgers. So we went there and we went in there and it was wall to wall girls because they yeah. go there to hide from uh, hoagie, creeps, hoagie Philly guys. So, uh, oh my god, yeah, um, you guys coming out. <laughs> you always post the uh, uh, that guy's okay. great with that. That uh, the, the, the dude who does the Philly uh, yeah, Paradonia or something uh, like that. Uh, he barstool. Uh, Oh, the oh, Dubs guy? The the guy who's always like, yeah! He's like, uh, <laughs> There's a couple. The Say Berm guy is great. Uh, the Paradonia guy or something like that who does like remakes of uh, movies and dubs them in Philly oh, accents. No, this and is, he's always um, talking about like crushing up perks and going to get hoagies. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the one dude who's... Um, he, it's like a it's it's a specific area of Philly, and then he's like, "Yeah, the birds are playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, Delco. Yeah, the Delco, Delco Philly boys. guy. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, no, Notre Dame was cool for for that. I mean, I like I have you know you, Kevin. I mean, Roger and Bridget got married, but like it was Mariano, you, Kevin, um, and maybe a couple others that were like you know lifetime friends that I met yeah. there. That like I would have never met if I would have stayed in public school. So like, as much as it sucked, like the first day where I was like, why the fuck did I agree to this with my mom? Because I, I got in so much trouble. I wouldn't have graduated. Yeah. I don't even know where I would be at if I stayed in public school. Um, when did you start getting into like? raising money uh for cancer and oh, when yeah. did you start getting into because i, I want to get into that was how um, you ended up with the beer at two rivers so riding a bunch of bikes uh a bunch of friends used to do this event it was every other year called the pennsylvania perimeter ride against cancer so it was like a five day i think five days maybe six five day ride like they pick you up you drop all your stuff at, uh, uh, I think we started in Palmerton. Meet in Palmerton, load all your shit up. Uh, one year, they dropped us off in like Vermont. And it's like, you got to ride back, mm -hmm. basically. They had routes. Um, you had like a bin, a Tupperware bin of shit. Um, and they would, you know, you'd do it like 100 miles a day, and you'd sleep in like a, a gymnasium floor. You had an air mattress and all this stuff. All while like putting that stuff on social media to raise money uh, for uh, the Cancer Society and the local dream come true, which is like, you know, sick kids who like, yeah. hey, I want to go to Disney World kind of shit. <clears throat> so I had some family members pass from like cancer and I was like, man, this seems like a really cool cause. And like, I know all the people doing the ride and I fell in love with that ride. It, it was every other year. And like this group of like 60, 70 people, I think we were, we raised so much fucking money. They they just, uh, I think like yesterday, we're on like WFMZ that they cut a check for like thousands and thousands of dollars to the dream come true for the last time. So this past year, I think was the last ride that they're ever going to do. The The family that runs it, they've just like kind of had enough. It's a, mo a monster undertaking like to do all this yeah, yeah, huge yeah. ride. The, the logistics are wild. You're asking people to donate floor space so that 70 people can sleep on your floor so that we're not spending money on hotels or so that a hundred percent of the money we're raising it's just going right back goes right to the cause you know so in 2019 um you know two rivers kind of like my my home base and troy's a big cyclist and i would always kind of get on his ass about like having too high of uh alcohol beers I'm like, man, you know, it's I'm my gripe like, with them. I'm not I, them, with everybody, with, uh, with, with the industry. Yes, with, with the um, industry. Well, see, my thing with it is, I wasn't drinking when um, IPAs and everything came out. Yeah. So when I got back into drinking, I was kind of lost, and then like I didn't get IPAs, I didn't get all that, and then a couple times I got drunk on, and I was like, I had like five beers, I got a pounding headache, and um, I love volume. So do I. I love. I'm also volume. a uh, uh, just like you. I I, I know our high like, life garage beers is what I call them. Garage beers, and they're coming back. Um, they are garage beers. Uh, volume. I have a cadence. I like yeah, because you like, like you like your with. bush your yeah, bush light. Bush I get into that when awesome. I hang out with Richard. Yeah. Um, and also I I do like all the 
good IPA. Yes. Yeah. I do like that. I also have like a million and one allergies that I do realize like the more ingredients, lupulin powder, all this, all this weird shit Wheat, even eventually screws with me. Like I feel worse. This is like brewed with like rice and what, you know, it's, it's bullshit. Uh, garage beer you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, so it. i used to it's i so used good. to harp on him about that all the time i'm like dude i don't i, I just rode 80 miles it's 100 degrees out like i don't want a fucking seven percent like yeah, double fucking yeah, ipa yeah. like chocolate Jesus Christ, like i'll just go to sleep or something yeah so like i finally uh he, he was like we're gonna we're gonna make a a really light beer and just call it and that's, that's light <laughs> and like at the time it was a year of the pennsylvania perimeter ride which like we had to raise X amount of money to like get on the ride, and he's like, "What do you think if like we launch your beer as like a uh, a fundraiser also?" For... Yeah, that's fucking awesome. So it made like a ton of money. It was really good. Maybe like four or five thousand dollars. Like we sold fucking t shirts. Yeah. and just put all the money uh, towards towards that. It was it was great. It, it made a, a bunch more money to add to the cause, and then most recently, so it was like a seasonal beer for them. And this is their first. They just re-released it. Um, so they sold enough of it to like keep making it. Yeah, they were just like because it's a very standard. Um, it's probably the first thing that most people ask for when they don't know anything about beer, and they're like, your "Well, what's your beer? lightest beer?" And they do have a uh, they they have like a Mount Vernon Lager or something yeah. like that, which a lot of people go for. Um, and in the summer, I think they have a. Uh, do they have this on tap there? They do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's radical. (laughs) Um, It's a lifetime achievement. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Good for you. You have your own beer. Yeah. People will elbow at your funeral. Here it is. Beer. (laughs) 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 Just jabbing keys into the cans. (laughs) Um, Who's at your funeral? (laughs) You. (laughs) Probably just you. Um, Yeah. Shot cutting tall boys (laughs) and that's light. No, no, no. You don't get it. He'd be fine with it. Um, yeah, so they this is the first beer that they ever put in in cans. So they just thought like this. Would oh be yeah, because normally they they just can uh, the beers there when you yep. like uh, yeah the they get the growlers yeah, yep. yeah yeah. So they thought this would be great. Uh, we can bring stuff like this to Bacon Fest and like all the festivals. Like and eventually, yeah, people go out to these restaurants and there's always the dad or me. Uh, going, what's the latest beer you got? You're like, yeah, we're going like, there tonight, and I'm going to keep yeah. drinking this because yeah. I don't want to drink three beers and be like, man, I don't, they have, I don't uh, want to be too fucked up to drive home. No. Uh, they also have, like in the summer, sometimes they have something called Viva Easton, which is like basically freaking Corona, and it's awesome. Yeah. I didn't uh, know they had that. Yeah. I don't think they've had that in like in the last... They, I think they did it this summer, too. But I think the problem with these, I'm not a... Obviously not a beer snob because I want light beer. But I think from what I've been told, like the light beer is actually harder to make. It takes more time. I didn't know that. And it takes more space. That's probably why Miller know? High Life is such a, um, up there on the. Uh, yeah, the, and it's uh, just like so it, it kind of slows down production of other stuff. So like the the fresh IPA stuff is easier. You can just boom, get it out, get it yeah. out, get it out. You know, it doesn't have to sit as long. Yeah, I know McCall does light done right. I never tried that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Do you do like the what's the track racing the Velodone or whatever that is? Yeah, yeah man. That lunatic, uh, what's his face that we know um, was doing that for a little bit. Oh, uh, Mark. Yeah, Philip Brown. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I saw him at. Um, I think he's back to uh, flat track like dirt, um, dirt bikes again. You know, like old school Harley's on a dirt. It's kind of like a Velodrome, but like uh, dirt track almost like sprint yeah. cars. Like, and they just go sideways. Yeah, I got like, him to, um, like, to kind of accept the idea of possibly doing a podcast i haven't talked to him in like two years he was uh, at uh Muma's, he was at Muma's. um well Muma died during covid so not of covid but like it was that time when people weren't doing funerals so his family yeah, had something yeah. very private so then all of his friends had like a barbecue party yeah and uh he showed up to that and i was like yo and i was like talking to him i'm like you talked to nat and i forget what he said um something about you were always on a bike or something yeah and then um, I was like, dude, you got to do a podcast with me. And he was like, who the hell wants to hear about what I did? And I'm like, bro. <laughs> dude, he's I'm like, I want to really start with fucking stuff. Coney Island. Yeah, Coney Island. Talk about uh, the Baja 1000. Yeah. Like, uh, I think I know enough people that know him that they might be able to talk him into it. It would, But I yeah. like, there's going to be a point when I walk away from the restaurant in a fact that like somebody else will do my job. And then yeah. when that part happens... 
that'll be probably on like the tail end of me probably i don't know if i'll ever stop doing stuff like this because i'm very similar to you where like you all of us have to do something creative so like what you do with the bike it's like you know there's a lot into that you have to think into it you're researching it there's a creative aspect to it but um i really want to get on the road and like take like equipment and like even if i have to do it by myself so like i would love to capture an interview with mark in mark's atmosphere do you remember when he had that you took me there there were so many like pockets of like because we would hang out for a while then we wouldn't and then we would Mm -hmm. and when we started hanging out around that time we were drinking and he lived over in that warehouse and he had the (laughs) the front lobby was like an evil knievel um that was the first time where that's where I started thinking I could I can start doing my own thing and th- like you think outside of the box of what a a, a home what you're or supposed a, yes because like yeah. he was I remember and he was a little shy about it because and that's how I am when people come down into here they come into the spaces yeah. that I create um so you take a girl back to the old warehouse yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. but like he had bunk beds in the one yeah. room and yeah. then when he was giving me a tour I was like oh you live here and then like once I got in a position where I wanted to stay doing my craft spending money on a warehouse and then spending another two thousand dollars on an apartment that you would drive back and forth to and that was probably i remember we went to a diner after we left there yeah and um that was the first inkling where i was like oh this is fucking cool like this guy's doing his own fucking thing like you don't have to have an apartment like if you really want some shit that you want to do because what was he doing running a machine shop he he had where did he even get all that equipment from he did you just slowly start buying up all the stuff yeah. so he did uh i feel like what a, what a lot of us do he he worked a job to Learned be able yeah. to be able to do all the other shit that he really wanted to do yeah. uh and his job like the hours were pretty uh, kind of like my job now like i'm i'm out of work like super fucking early um government gig great benefits all this stuff i've been there a really long time i also happen to enjoy it um and it, it it just checks so many boxes that I'm just like I'm not I'm not miserable there. I enjoy my job, whatever, and it allows for me to just do all this stuff. I yeah. don't have to think about how I'm making money, you know. And yes, I could probably go somewhere else and use some talents and make more money. What the fuck am I going to do with more money? Like uh, I'd also have to work X amount, crazy more hours and whatever. And like so that's that's what I want to do. I want to spend my whole life. Yeah. Working, I want to work as little as possible. Um, I never make, knew what the make finish as much line money was. As possible, and then really just, I want to have off time as, as much as possible. Yeah. Like, do what I want to do, be with the people that I want to be with. And that's it. And I never like, realized... I get it. Like, I got to check some boxes. You got to pay a mortgage. You got to do this. Yeah. Insurance is kind of nice. Um, but really, when like, you get that freedom, when you when you think about it, I, I see people go through this uh, loop all the time too. And they're like, man, you know, I can I can I can leave here and go there, and I'll make uh, 10, 10 grand more, or this or that. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, but like, there's there's a balance there, right? Like, uh, are you still going to be able to do the stuff that makes you happy? Yeah. And I know what it's like to work 60, 70 hours a week and be fucking miserable. Yeah. Even, even in a job that I actually liked. Like yep. when I was at OK Four Wheel Drive, I was just surrounded by cars and it was fucking great and whatever. But I was doing crazy hours. I was miserable. I was miserable because actually the hobby that I loved at the time, I do miss cars a lot, um, but the hobby that I loved so much got diluted so much because I was doing it all day and I couldn't control what I was like doing there that like I ended up not wanting to do my hobby anymore. Like, I would come home, I spent all day with cars, and now I'm going to come home and do more car stuff? Like, it, it was almost, like, too much. Um, so now it's just like, hey, I have uh, this job that just runs the gamut on uh, skill set-wise. I could be welding one day, fixing cars. I'm really just managing yeah. all that stuff now. But then, I, like, I, I just have so much time to just do whatever the fuck I want, which is awesome. Yeah, once you get that freedom to kind of do your own shit and everything else is taken care of, um it it's was almost com- just like uh it's automatic now yeah you know like because like it's now weird. it's like you know and i say it the last couple of podcasts it's like i had to force myself to want more money yeah like i'm totally fine like i get i barely get by and yeah. i'm just like i've never been happier right. i'm not like There's all fucked up in the head yeah. i'm not all you know my depression isn't even there anymore it's like yeah i, I have my days but it's one it's not six yeah. months i don't i don't uh i don't yearn for 
a massive house. I don't, uh, I, 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 it's just me, Sue, and a 10 pound dog. Yeah. Being, <laughs> you know be, what I mean? Well, being like, down just, here changed you know. everything for me because, like, I thought I, well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, and like, like, it's the same shit. Like, when we grew up, when you're like pre programmed to like get married, have kids, have a house, like, where, like, you know, now, you know, the less I do that stuff, the less we I'm like, well, that, maybe that's uh, not. Uh, we call that something now. Uh, I forget. Pre-programming no, from our parents. Um, what do we call that? Grooming. Yeah, yeah, Don't we call yeah, that grooming? Yeah, that you, mean, you mean the guy, the guy that was in the fucking dress in church that was trying to groom? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. That, I guess that, you can consider that grooming. But like, uh, Father Luigi. <laughs> Father Luigi. <laughs> um, Father Castellano. Yeah. The Bolivia stories. Mm -hmm. um, Bolivia. Whatever happened to that guy? I don't know. He probably uh, had to scramble out of town. Yeah, he's like probably living in Bolivia now. Yeah, keep cutting oh. those checks for the church. <laughs> <laughs> so like um you know when um i don't know like when you know when i shook all that and like i've been down here for five years i'm like the things that i need are on a very it's, it's a small list yeah. like jay was like what are you what are you thinking for the next studio and i was like windows are cool and he's like yeah. yeah he's like it has windows and i was like all right and i was like uh, if we put like a kitchen in, can I have a dishwasher? And he's like, yeah, dude, that comes with a kitchen. And I was like, okay, that's all I care about. And yeah. he's like, what? It's just like really simplifying yes. stuff, right? Like, yeah. uh, I well, could, when you take I could shit chase. away that you don't really yeah. need, yeah. You, know? you don't, you're, you're not chasing every little thing. It's great. I, I, I think if people want like more stuff and, and, and whatever, and like bigger house and that, that, that's fine. It's just never really been a part of, I never really thought that like that would enhance my life anyway. Yeah, you know, well, that, it's always like, the and, idea. And it's like that too. Like, uh, um, I, I, we've had some opportunities to buy some like investment properties or whatever, and I'm like, that would be cool. I have the money to do that. When I get the phone call because the toilet's not working or something, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm gonna yeah. be fucking. Or pissed. if a tree like, branch falls on somebody's might, Subaru, it, it, it might have. <laughs> <laughs> it might have an. It, is this gonna be a positive or more of a negative? Do yeah. I want that? There's stress? always there's always problems. Carl's did Airbnb. And I just and don't want. They're the, out of it already. I just don't want the stress from from a lot of stuff that like I've I've simplified so many things that I'm just like, hey, things are running fine. Th you know, shit still happens, but I I just don't want any added stress life is very easy and just compartmentalized and like we have very much tons of freedom yeah. sue's a little bit uh busier with like the yoga studio and stuff like that but it's super successful yeah i'm glad that all worked out because when i had been great when she lost that i was super bummed for her and then now like how it's thriving over there yeah. and it's like a part of like that area yeah i don't want to build another one no, you did that. <laughs> yeah, I think you did that all by yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, a few. Well, I mean, like uh, we had Rizart there. Yeah, uh, doing. He's coming back on on uh, Friday the thirteenth. I'm having him Josh on. was there tons of time. You know, like uh, th that's the thing. Like, I might not talk to these people that often. Same with you and Kevin and whoever. And it's just like you know, uh, you have lifelong friends. Where yeah. It's like, hey, uh, it's time to rally. I need some help. Yeah. 100%. You know what I mean? And, and everyone's just, boop, right there. Yeah, no questions asked. Right there. Not, no one wants I'm like a that with, with Brian no Jandrew now. Like, like yeah. Jandrew's so busy with building his contracting, and he's so close to it. And, like, yeah. he started so young. And, like, he's not even – I mean, when he comes close to my age, like, he's like, he'll be thriving in that business. Yeah. And, like, we went for a beer because he's getting married. And I'm like, yo, it's so crazy. Like, we don't even see each other anymore. But I'm like – that's so good. Yeah. I was like, when we saw each other before, we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. And we had time to just go rack up credit cards and get trashed. So, and I was like, I miss doing that with you. That was yeah. some of the best times ever. But like when you get further along and you start having more responsibilities and things start actually working out because the hard work is paying off after you repeat yeah. it over and over. I was like, you don't, you, you kind of lose the time yeah. you had to fucking run down the bar on the Holy Family Club. Yeah. I used to, uh, <laughs> I used to get shit like about, uh, y you know, like, hey, are, are are you still making furniture or like, are, are you are you still making yeah, wine I racks? I'm like, oh, all that. that shit, yeah, that shit, fucking like 15, 20 years ago before anybody really. I, I watch like uh, what Jeff does at Oak and Iron and stuff. Like yeah, that. dude, that's crazy. Amazing. His crazy. skill set's just like bizarre. He's insane. He's gonna do some stuff like, over uh, there. He's making the sign out front for the I, I get, coffee shop. I get my uh, balls busted a lot now because like I'll help people do stuff and I, I just don't want anything. Like I don't, yeah. I don't. Do you talk I, to Packer like, or any of those guys and do car stuff anymore? I text them every now and then, but yeah. like I've always been. Uh, I, I've always just wanted to learn more shit. Um, like, hey, I have a job. I'm cool with the money that I make there. 
you need help doing something or I can learn yeah. something from you, I'll I'll donate eighty hours. Are those guys still doing project. car stuff? Like, is that like, is that truck scene still around? Yeah, Pecker's doing a lot of like uh, top top fuel drag car re- retro drag car yeah. stuff, and like yeah, the 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 truck scene's still there. I, I I have some friends there that I still talk to and whatnot. Not as much. I'd like to. Uh, do a little reunion tour with some of those friends because yeah, I miss them. Yeah, I remember you took me oh, down man. there and they lit the woods got, on fire by accident. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I just crazy. got I got burnt out of that. That was a yeah. really um, crazy like five years of like every weekend of my life was just like, hey, we're going to Mississippi. Hey, yeah, to I saw Oliver had the truck out. Yeah, like yeah. come back, boom, fly out to Oliver's in Arizona, come back, stay, you know, work for four he's days, another one. Boom, I, I wanna, back out to California. I want to interview that kid's like, brain and all that weird yeah, shit he's got in his house. Yeah. I'd rather do it in person. I, I spent, uh, we, we never went on, um, it sounds like I had like a tortured fucking childhood or something, like did not. Um, but we never really went on vacations. Yeah. We had everything that uh, you could possibly ask for. We had a pool, you know, basketball hoop, like whatever. We never really went on vacation. So when I got to the age of like, yeah, you were on the road for a while, whatever, especially just, when you and Duff hooked up. Oh man, just out. Yeah, I'm out every weekend, gone. Like it was, it was great. And then like eventually, like I just got burned out. Like, yeah, dude, that travel, the all of it. But that's yeah. that's what I was saying. And to bring it full circle, we could wrap up because we're almost at two hours. Nice. Um, and then we can go eat. It's yeah. like six now. Um. What the hell was I going to say? Oh, when you got into the bikes, that was like, yeah. I, I was like, ah, oh, he found another thing. And then like, you know, because I could see like, you know, like it's got to be tough to be having, you know, like multiple trucks and you're working on the project. And I think you were going through some bullshit with the one truck you had. And it wasn't getting finished. And then like oh, when man. you cut ties with all it's that, terrible. it was just stress. And and you're watching like you're dumping so much money in this. Yeah. Stuff that, like you're never really going to get back. And that's not necessarily why you're doing it. Yeah. I, ha- I have one now that like I, w- I saw you got another painted one painted and yeah. uh, did all the stuff too. And it was a great little COVID kind of project. Do you it still have the, awesome. uh, the silver uh, taco or whatever? The, no. what oh, was like the, the gray truck? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just drive that every day. Yeah. 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 I have a, I have a couple, but like, I, I, I'd love to get back into it, but I know, um, it's like when you do anything like, uh, you want to, I, fucking competitive guy if i have something or i'm gonna do something I you want to make it, it look to be. cool and, yeah. and i know what i know what fucking looks really really good and like do i really want to put did the, the truck you get did you finish the good? project yeah 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 and i just i strictly just wanted it as like a driver like a cool little 80s uh lowered truck sport truck kind of thing like something you would see in an ad for like budweiser or bf <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. back in the 80s with like bikini girls on it whatever that's exactly what this truck is yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. shit that i fell in love with paging through magazines as a kid and i was like man i have one of those and when like, i saw you started good. uh moving the trucks out and you started putting the uh yeah, the, the bikes. bikes in yeah. and you had like the racks to work on the bikes i was yeah. like oh he's balls deep do you yeah. still have the a treat machine I do. Yeah. Ice what is cold. it filled with? Ice cold. Right now, <laughs> yeah. uh, Miller High Life cans. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Off the yeah, combine. It's always trash. It's always trash. <laughs> I, I, when you were living there, uh, I think it was like, I think we had a really good stream of like uh There was a tree there for soda, a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sarsaparilla. Then I think you switched like, it to uh, Bush. You yeah. had the Bush in there for a yeah, while. Yeah. It's still The soda machine still runs? Yeah. 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 I never unplug it. Just Yeah. I want to get something like that for the, st- the new it's studio. Cooking, man. It's cooking, man. I'm excited for the restaurant and everything. It's going to be It's going to be crazy. It's going to be uh, really good. But I'm excited. I'm excited to, um, you know, there's a lot of downtime I have and I'll miss it. But I'm excited to flip the script on everything. I was telling somebody yesterday, like, you know, when I started, you know, this whole thing when I was sober and then it's like I waited 10 years and then I, I left that and like that changed me so much with having to find balance and all that. And then like now I know that like, you know, if you put enough hard work in and you do three to five, you know, you should, probably shouldn't wait till 10. So like <laughs> yeah. when, yeah, um, yeah. you know, when. I started messing around with stuff and then like I was talking to Gina and I was like, nah, like I need to like, let's, let's dump it over again. Like it's time. Like yeah. now I can read when like shit's tight and it's good, but like, all right, well let's venture into something and not be scared about it. And let's take everything you built and like apply it to the restaurant. And it's like, so I think it's the correct timing. And then like, even with that, it'll be a shorter turnaround time. Cause I'm not getting stuck to a flat top. I'll tell you that yeah, right now. Yeah. So like, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to build it out. I'm going to work really hard for three, three to five years and figure out what jobs are what. And then hire somebody correctly to pay it who wants yeah. to be 
a chef and wants to manage and run a restaurant and I'll pay them what they should be being paid and do all the shit that wasn't ever done for me. Cause you know what should be. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and that, and that's I would be I doing that feel, if somebody would have done that's it. That's like me. a great thing. Uh, my friend Jason, who's opening a place, um, downtown Easton, um, cabinet, uh, he owned, he owned Tucker in the silk mill. Um, he knows, he, he knows the restaurant industry and like, that's, that's kind of like one of his things. It's just like, uh, I know what it's like to do these jobs. Um, yeah. I know what it's, uh, you know, you're just slaving away in a kitchen and I, I, I don't want high turnover. I want to pay people. I, and same, same with the two rivers guys. I know they treat their people really well. And, and the porters guys treat their people really well. It's like, we want to pay people. We want to keep them here. It's a respectable job. Yeah. It's a respectable trade. You become flexible you know? with people and you yeah. start like helping them out. And, you know, um, and I know it's not going to be easy to find somebody to replace me, but like, I know I can do it. Like yeah, I already set the, set the bar high when it's, but like, I already know, like, yourself. like I keep trying to get Alessandro in there. Like yeah. Alessandro came I to this country yeah. and like, he just wants to work and he yeah. wants to provide for his family. So if I take him in there and groom him to take over my position, I can get out of there sooner than later, but I can also pay him more than he's ever been paid sure. and set him up and be like, look, you know, here's incentive with catering and like all the shit that was like, not done for me and if it would have been i probably would have stayed in the cooking industry yeah. running you know doing what jeremy's doing right. you turn, know jeremy was taken care of you like yeah. you know what i mean like his story was awesome when i had him on um i'd like to bring him on with um mike from third and fairy because they used yeah. to work with each other oh really um yeah and I, I mike's been hard to land down but like the last time i was in there we hung out and then um I'm gonna book him for the podcast. I hope I get him in before January, but he's been awesome. All the all of like anyone I've ever like respected or brought on the podcast with like um, restaurants and stuff. Like Sal from Giacomo's, oh, he's, amazing. he's like, "Yo, if you, you need yeah. anything?" He's like, "Here's my hood guy." He's why, like, "Here's why do, this." Why do you think yeah. those guys have been there that long? Yeah, like I, I've been going to Giacomo's for years, and like all the faces. I just are, to him today. Are very similar. You know what I mean? There's very low turnover there. Why? Because they're, yeah. it's a fucking awesome family. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like he he respects his people. He gives it's, his people there's time shit off. That he, there's like, shit that he's know. gonna do that like all, all mock or like yeah. repeat like where like he gives a week off like they take a week off yeah and like i already oh, said yeah. to jaron gino i'm like we shut down for a week it's the worst week of my life like because well, i go there for lunch all the time and i'm like god damn it dude that cheese sticks yeah, killer so man great. that he made me one the other day and i was just, i just did cooper and fried onion yeah. like it was i took so i because i'll take people there but um yeah. Whatever, we're just gonna it's, keep rambling. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I dude. appreciate you as such a friend. I love you. You're a brother to me. Uh, you've been there through the craziest shit. You helped me out with when this whole thing started. Um, and we don't get to see each other that much. So Kevin's like, "Yo, Amato's coming on." I'm like, "Yeah, I want to talk to him about bike and biking." And I'm like, "We don't get to sit like this forever." Yeah. So um, we should do it again. Maybe even, I'll talk to Rizart um, and yeah. see if he wants to have like you see because I know Bobby said he'll drive up. So oh, maybe yeah. you, Bobby, and uh, Rizart, I'll talk. Talk to him. Oh it's a Friday too. Motorheads. Yeah, but I was like, because even if it's just Rizard, I was like, yo, let's hit those guys up and go out to eat afterwards. Because yeah. you're probably gonna have to work. So I think he's coming in at eleven. Maybe I'll see what Bobby's doing. Man, I'm flexible. But um, and you yeah. let me know if you need help with the restaurant. I'm a I appreciate it. Free dude. labor guy. Free yeah, labor for the ones be, I love. Uh, you kidding me? Make pour concrete. That is. It. Yeah, um, that's fine. Um, that's fine. I'm gonna give you a chance to uh, plug your social media where anybody can buy the uh, beer or whatever that goes back yeah, to help yeah, man. out. Uh, Stop at Two Rivers and grab a, a Nat's Light and anything over there. You know, Jeremy, those guys are great. Food, uh, I can't wait to eat. I don't really do much social media, but I'm uh, at One Ton Tomato on Instagram. You want to follow his crazy bike shit? Yeah, if you want to watch uh, videos of me uh, riding bike, riding and bikes, and, 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 and crushing freaking glizzies. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's beautiful, man. Cool. Thank you so All much. Right, dude. First time listener, first time watcher, it's neveragainstudio.com. That has all of the things that we do over there. The video and the audio you can watch on the website. If not, go to Spotify, go to YouTube, subscribe to both. Um, if you want to get into the apparel or anything I'm really doing, it's Never Again Studio at Instagram. That has all my dumb shit on there. Um, the stories are fun, and you can get apparel by going into my link tree, and it's drop shipping, and what's on there will be sent out in two to three days. Thank you so much again for coming on. I'm excited to go get something to eat. Thank you, dude. It was very... Uh, I, I've, it's literally been bothering me to talk to you about how far you went with that. So that was dope. It's beautiful, man. I appreciate it. That was cool. I didn't know you did all that shit. I didn't know oh, you had COVID yeah. and you were.